Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob, and today we're going to be playing some Adventuria, a Adventuria, Adventure Card Game, and we're checking out some new stuff from the Kickstarter. Uh, today we're looking at Nadime, 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 something like that, how you pronounce it supposedly, uh, The Caliph's Daughter. Uh, it's an expansion, a mainly solo expansion with tacked on multiplayer rules. Uh, it's an adventure expansion that's meant to be set up on the table, uh, is how I feel about it after reading the rules and playing, uh, for a little bit yesterday, but I realized it takes a while to beat. Uh, so we're definitely not playing through the entire expansion. There's quite a bit of content, which is cool. It's very replayable. Uh, it's got a lot of variability in the setup and you, you're kind of like, I don't know, it's kind of like a, I guess like a roguelike, right? Like you're basically attempting to rescue a princess in a palace and randomly the palace, you know, is the, the, the rooms and, and, and corridors and things are generated randomly. Every night you go and try to sneak into the palace to rescue Nadime, the, uh, like the princess basically in the palace. You're trying to rescue her, she's been captured and you can't do it in one night. You can't do it in one night. So you got to do your best, push your luck. Hopefully you don't die. Hopefully you don't die because if you do, you lose access to that that uh, the character, the hero that you're playing with, and you have to try with a different hero. Uh, but you can choose to get some progress done, leave, come back later, set up the dungeon again randomly, and play through. It's kind of neat. Kind of neat. Yeah. No. Uh, I tried to. I see in the chat you guys are talking about me wearing a belly dancer outfit today. You know, to get in the theme of the stream for this expansion. Uh, the, the crazy part is the problem with COVID, my local, you know, belly dancing outfit store uh, down the street. I went there and they only let so many people in because of COVID. And I guess it was busy. They had a sale today, this morning. So I could only wait so long and I had to get home for the stream. So I wasn't able to even get in the store. I guess it takes a while for people to like try on outfits in there and find something they like. Um, so yeah, so I just didn't get anything today. But, but maybe in a future stream, uh, we can do that. You know, if I want to lose subscribers and viewers and stuff, you know, we can do that kind of thing. <laughs> I hate you all. All right. Anyways, um, I see Christian's back saying it's one of his favorite. Uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Adam Morris showing up. Long time no see. Hello, hello. Hello, everyone joining live. Hello, hello. So we are going to play through today. I assume a one attempt, maybe two. But I don't want to show too much of this game. I don't want to spoil too much. I want to give you guys just a taste of it. Uh, in case you're interested in the Kickstarter, this is currently on Kickstarter right now, what I'm showing you today. Uh, the link to that Kickstarter is down in the video description. And thank you to all of our Patreons that helped vote on deciding which expansion from the Kickstarter we play through today. Uh, and this one won by a landslide. Yeah, Christian's saying a roguelike is exactly right, and Christian works for the publisher. Uh, anyone have any questions in the chat? Maybe Christian knows the answer. Uh, <laughs> you, can, you can harass him. Uh, he'll borrow that term. Standard playtime for the whole thing is 11 hours. 11 hours. Yeah, let's actually take a look. Let's get down to the table. We'll take a look at this, actually. So... Uh, this was the other expansion. So in the Kickstarter, there is two big box expansions. Uh, this one's the Curse of Borberad. I'm not playing this one today because I put these both against each other in a poll. And this one is the one you guys want to see played on the channel, Landslide. Ulysses Spiel International on their Twitch page yesterday, I believe I saw an update on the Kickstarter. Uh, did like a preview of this expansion, Curse of Borberad. I have uh, put the expand or the link to that uh, Twitch video, that stream in the video description for this. Uh, so just check that down below in the video description. If you don't see it, just refresh. I just put it in like a few minutes ago. I found it. Uh, so you can check that out there. But I'm not sure if we play this on the channel ever. We'll see uh, when and if we have time. But we have some other games to get through next week and things. So um, I, had to, I had to pick at least one. So I don't want to spoil too much. But my understanding is this is similar. This is like, it's different in a lot of ways. But it is the same idea. You're setting up a big map. Kind of like you see this big map here behind behind this box. Uh, where you're going through floors on a dungeon. And there is different mechanics to it. Uh, but you're kind of like pushing your luck. It's multiple plays. As you can see here. 60 minutes, but with two asterisks. Because per session, it's roughly 60 minutes. The entire adventure takes 8 to 12 sessions to complete. Which is, I think, the 11-ish hours that Christian's talking about. So, if you want a theme of dying over and over again. Going up in a tower. You know, different enemies and that kind of thing. A more darker theme. 
That's what this expansion is, but you can get these together in the expand in the uh, Kickstarter that's going on right now. Again, link in the video description. Just throw that out of the way. But here's the one we're playing today. Nadime, I think is how you say it, but again, I'll butcher it. I'll, I'll stream, that's what we do here. Uh, Nadime, the Caliph's daughter, same thing, same thing. Playtime, 60 minutes, couple asterisks. There is, uh, it is focused on one player, but there are special rules included to convert this solo adventure into a group adventure for two to six players. And then uh, per session, eight to 12 hours to complete. So we're not playing eight to 12 hours of a stream today. Uh, we're gonna do a couple hours and, and, and we might make a couple attempts but again, there's a lot of hidden surprise stuff and stories, and, and it's like a, it's like to to complete this. My understanding is like a waterfall design where it's like, or a kind of like a breadcrumb design, like you know Metroid and and those kind of game designs, where you need to like unlock something to be able to unlock something else. But to unlock that, you need to unlock this, and it's like kind of like cascades, you know, like a waterfall or whatever you want to call it like a waterfall effect or whatever, where it's like, you know, you can't get into the final layer until you found this room, but this room you can't get into until you find this key, this key you can't find until you beat that boss. And so it's constantly like that. So you're just trying to get as much of that progress done every time you play. Anyone who knows what a Metroidvania is, same kind of idea. You wander around the map, you try to get into certain places, you can't get in yet, but it's gonna tease it for you. Then you gotta backtrack a little bit, find the key, eventually go back to where you've been before, unlock that, boom, you're into a new area. And the game slowly, you know, peels away the layers in front of you as you dig deeper. Um, that's the best way I can describe it. Hopefully that makes sense to you. But um, that's what this is. So today we're going to just, you know, peel back a layer or two. But I want to leave a lot to, for you guys to discover if you're interested in, I think, playing one or two runs here uh, will definitely be enough for you guys to understand how it works. So for those who don't know what Aventuria is, uh, get out of here. I'm just kidding. Uh, there's other videos on the channel to watch. Hit up the playlist section at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. Uh, and you can see other playthroughs where we play some of the core set stuff, earlier things in the game, explain how it works better. Today we're just literally going to focus on this expansion uh, and check it out. So Quipster, uh, thank you for the support, Super Chat. Uh, so I've heard... <laughs> That's Quip... Pedalian super chats are trending. Here you go. <laughs> well, it's, it's an onion. Yeah, basically, Buell. Basically, it's like an onion. Except for I wasn't crying when I was peeling back layers. So I, I don't know. Yet, yet. I'm assuming as you get deeper into this, you get to bigger bosses and things, uh, aka special opponents, which I have not seen uh, yet. I'm sure it, get, it gets crazier. But Quipster, thank you so much for the support. <laughs> Buggers. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this is like a, yeah, Prince of Persia themed, like palaces, sultans, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, that's the theme here. That's why everyone's joking about trying to get me to dress up like a belly dancer and stuff, which I, I don't know. There's, I don't know if that goes against like YouTube's, you know, you know, agreements and stuff to have me in a belly dancer outfit. I might be, uh, crossing some lines there. <laughs> uh, but yeah. And Kanji doesn't want any spoilers. Yes. There will be some spoilers, but again, I'm only going to do one run, and I did one run yesterday to practice, to, to like practice it, kind of make sure I have the rules down, to kind of understand how it works, and then reread the rules. Hopefully it's all sunk in and we'll figure it out. But we do have the rules here to look up stuff if we need to, uh, and we will, because if we have to reset up uh, and whatnot, I'll show you that. Um, but I did want to highlight some of the stuff in the expansion. So we're playing with this many henchmen to start here. Okay, we grabbed all the henchmen. Uh, that are palace guards, okay? There's a whole bunch of different ones in here. Okay, we're putting the palace guards in here. That's who starts in the henchman deck. And we draw from here on this run. I'm assuming, I didn't see this yet, but they give you more henchmen. They give you basically double that amount of henchmen. So somehow I'm assuming if I run into the wrong room or fail the wrong test, we may be adding other henchmen to the deck at later on in the adventure. So the adventure is from the first night trying to, uh, you know, infiltrate the, the palace to rescue Nadime, uh, all the way until you either rescue her, I think rescuing her, that's it. That's how you win. Or you've run out of, um, no, no, there's other ways for it to end. 
you either A, she has cer a certain amount of life, so here's Nadime's heart, so this is like her health, straight up like Zelda style. Uh, so as she like loses hearts, if ever on a single run, she gets down to all five of her hearts lost, playing on normal difficulty, she's dead, and we lose. The adventure's done. Okay, that's one way it can end. So you have to push your luck, you have to be careful. If she's getting down to like one heart left, uh, you might need to just get out of there and come back another night. Because uh, you're risking her life. The other way is you, if you finally capture her, which again is like 11, uh, 8 to 12 playthroughs or whatever it said, uh, if you're lucky. But there's a cool part of this game, like I said before, if you, uh, your character, your hero that you're playing with dies on a run, like literally gets down to zero health, uh, you're automatically booted out. That character is imprisoned. You can never use them again on the current adventure you're playing. So an adventure is made up of several runs into the dungeon, basically, to try to try to rescue the princess, how I can best explain it. But if you realize you're low on health, which I did yesterday, I realized, you know, I might die. Uh, you got to get out. You got to get back to the courtyard in the, in the middle or wherever you've put it and, and escape. So it's like anybody who's played Arkham Horror Living Card Game, this is like your resign on your starting location. It, it is in this game the same idea. You can keep pushing, keep getting things done, and, and all the progress you do on changing rooms and exploring story paths, those save going forward. So the next time you sit down to come and, and take another attempt at, at the palace, you'll have a new random room deck that may consist of some of these rooms may have you've completed, they leave and different rooms get, get shuffled in and it all comes out in a different order. So the next attempt, if you want to keep using your same character, don't let them die. You need to get out of there before you get caught kind of idea. Um, unless you own all the adventurous stuff, then you probably have like 650 different heroes to play with and you can just keep dying over and over again and just use a different hero on your next attempt. You are even allowed to use a different hero on any attempt you want. So you could try with a hero you're working on and, and purposely like leave, you're fine, and then go, hmm, you know what? I want to try with this other hero I own. And you can do that on your next run, try a few runs with that hero, maybe that hero gets captured, then you go back, try the first hero, you know? And you keep going until they're either all imprisoned or you've rescued Nadimi. Jim says, I would love to see you play it all and save her. I, I, I wanted to do it. You guys know on the channel we like playing through full campaigns, full scenarios, all the way. If it takes like, you know, 60-something hours of streams, we would do it. The only thing is, this is on Kickstarter and nobody has this yet, except for maybe those in German, maybe, or, or like in Europe. I don't know. Because um, this was already printed in, in other languages. And this is Kickstarter for like the English version, I believe. Um, oh, we got a new subscriber. Ego Lens 2. Thank you so much. Oh, we're getting the flood of subscribers. So for those that don't know who've been watching the channel lately, YouTube has been messing with their API, which is breaking all kinds of different alert notification services, and they're freaking out because they have paying customers and it's out of their control. But YouTube's been breaking things like crazy to where subscriber notifications have been delayed by up to four hours and come in clumps. So that's what you're about to see here. It's only printed in German, says Hans. Okay, good to know, good to know. And thank you everyone who subscribed. If some of you are here right now, but some of these subscription notifications might be from like four hours ago. Hopefully that gets fixed at some point. But either way, thank you all for the support. But I may have to turn them off if it does not stop. <laughs> uh, it's a good problem to have, I guess. Uh, too many subscribers that the notifications get annoying uh, all at once, I guess, is, is a good problem. <laughs> but anyways... Uh, I apologize for that. Yes, thank you so much. All right. <clears throat> um, so yeah, lots of henchmen. So I don't know how you get these henchmen. I haven't looked at them. I don't want to look at them, but spoilery stuff. But like I said, uh, this Kickstarter, this game, no, nobody has it yet. It just, it just hit Kickstarter, right? It, 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 link down in the video description. Um, but I don't want to spoil it. Like I'm assuming there'll be some people who watch it, but I just want to give you guys a taste. Because it's on Kickstarter still. There's no chance a lot of people could have played it already and come and watched it. And yeah. So I also have other games uh, that I also have to get to um, next week for other Kickstarters. So I only have so much time uh, for this too. All right. Anyways. Uh, so I'm playing with a character 
uh, Mira O, who you guys have seen in previous playthroughs, and I want to show this, I want to play with her, uh, just to show you that we've worked on some of her stats and leveled her up using uh, adventure points, experience, whatever, in this game, uh, which we didn't get to show last video, but I just want to show you guys this is part of the game, like between scenarios, as you end any adventure, you can grind adventures, play them over and over again, level up your characters uh, to make them better, put new cards in, tweak their decks, that kind of stuff, gain rewards. Uh, so we are playing with that character. So even though... Uh, there's some skills printed on here for certain tests. I have to keep this nearby so I remember she has actually body control of 10 and a stealth of 9. And you can go up to, I think it's 4 above each skill, and that's like the max. So you can play like over and over again, even the same scenarios, trying to level up characters over and over again um, to make them better and have different cards in their decks, which we do have a couple cards tweaked in there. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, okay. What else? What else? Okay, so there's also, in this expansion you will not see today, there's this optional module called the Manticore uh, expansion. So this adds variability. I believe when you set up, there's something like removing a bunch of random rooms and putting some of these in or something like that. Uh, but there is, if you know, you're, get, you're playing this over and over again, you're seeing some of the same things, uh, there's a whole side expansion uh, for Manticore stuff that you add in somehow. I didn't read it all. I didn't want to know because I'm not worried about playing it today, but there is more in this expansion than what you're going to see here today is what I'm trying to get across there. Also, there's this is kind of cool, but I didn't want to mess with it yet because I'm not that experienced with this, but this is something that I'll leave for you guys to experience on your own. Uh, there are these cards, player cards in here. I was excited. I thought I was going to be able to play as a different character. Uh, these are player cards you can put in decks, okay? The, the thing with these cards, you can put up to five of them in the deck. The, it's called like a Night Preparations variant you can play with, where you can take up to five of these cards and put them in player decks. Now what these cards do, most of the cards in your player deck are focused on combat. Like, you know, defending, attacking, buffing up stats, healing, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, these cards, you can take cards out and put up to five of these in, but these cards aren't focused on combat. The cool part is these guys, these are focused on skill rolls and stuff for, you know, those story elements. So if you've seen Aventuria before, you normally play through a scenario and the scenario starts with some story. Then you go into a bunch of skill rolls that basically add variability to the playthrough. They might, you know, mess with your hand size, the cards you draw. They might give you fate tokens you can spend or take some away. They might damage you. They might heal you. They might give, they might give you all different things to just tweak the start. They might give you more uh, threat points to have more enemies in play, you know, that kind of thing. So every time you play a scenario, go through the story, you do skill rolls, and it might change up the playthrough and how you start. It might make it harder, it might make it easier, just changes things up, right? So, but this, there is none of that at the start. This is all on cards in here. So this looks familiar, right? You see this, these skill things, this is like what you would normally have in the story as you're playing through to get into the combat before you start playing Aventuria. This, you kind of get into it right away after a little bit of setup. And then you're in the combat, but these are interweaved as you move around the palace. So there's a new phase now of movement before you draw, before you play your endurance, before you attack, before the enemy goes, and before you end the round, you then wrap around again and do a movement where you go from room to room. Uh, and, and you may run into those kind of uh, effects. So they kind of mess with the formula a bit here, which is kind of neat. Frederick says, this game takes some shuffling in your experience. What is the most efficient way to shuffle the decks? Uh, that depends if I have sleeves on it or not. But that's a whole whole conversation, a deep one for another day, I guess. <laughs> uh, one of the milestones you could try to achieve in this playthrough is defeating Barad Barash, the master of bath, who is kind of a first mini boss you encounter. We'll see if we find that. You guys can get involved in this playthrough, help direct which direction we go in and see where we go, help make decisions, that kind of things. So we're going to play together here. But I just wanted to show, so these cards are available, and we're not going to play with any of these, but I just wanted to show that. So you can get cards that can help you on skill rolls. And you take out some of your combat cards. You can get cards that you gain plus five on all game effects that refer to the number of face-up story cards in play. So you can put these in your deck and they, they can help you in the movement around um, that's very specific to this um, expansion, which is cool. So you can tweak your deck for that. Uh, then they also give you a bunch of reward cards. So if you guys have seen, you get reward cards in the base game uh, and you get them in expansions. So if you want more reward cards to choose from after you beat a scenario, uh, they give you a whack ton of those. All right.
let's see here. What else we need to talk about? Um, there's also a bunch of story stuff we'll get into if we need to. I'm just putting this off to the side here. There's a Hasbaral deck we'll use for setup. There's some Veil Dance deck. I don't know what that's for. I haven't come across it yet. So here's the story deck. Uh, these are face up. You just grab out the one by title. Um, but these are kind of linked to rooms. So if you like kind of start a little story path on a room, eventually if you fulfill it or succeed or whatever, you may replace a random room card with a story card going forward, uh, which may have different things on the card. So I think that's what we kind of have to do. All right, so let's go through the setup just to make sure I, I do everything and don't miss it. Because um, again, this is new. So, so you basically start uh, setting up your first night. So when you go to start an adventure, so I recommend you set this up on a table, maybe leave it on the table and just sit down when you have time solo style and just keep, you know, playing as, you know, if you have a couple hours, you might be able to do a couple runs, you know, and then you just leave it set up. There's a way to put it away and, and set it back up. Not hard, but uh, you can just leave it out. So we remove those Manticore cards to talk about the story pile. We've set that up. Alice card pile, have it right here. And then the difficulty level. Okay. So the difficulty level. Uh, just like a normal adventure, you have like normal, easy, and legendary and difficult or whatever. So this is Nadime's, uh, tells you about her health. So she's going to start with five hearts, because we're playing on normal. With the uh, heart side face up, that's the red side here. Okay, so when she starts losing health, uh, they flip to this side, and if they all hit that, she's dead. Okay, we'll use a die to track that actually, so we can, you know follow along easier on stream or I could just spread out the cards I don't know whatever is easier but we'll see so at the start of the palace exploration we're gonna draw three Hazrabal cards Hazrabal is like the evil guy I believe that's that has her captured uh we're gonna draw three cards out of this deck that kind of gives you like the random start so similar to those things I was talking about in a normal adventure where you might be drawing less cards more cards get some fate points lose some health you know that kind of thing uh more threat points that's what this does, but it's specific to this adventure. So it can mess with things like how alert the guards are. This is basically, the guy knows you're going to come. He knows you're coming every night. He's heard rumors that someone's going to come in and try to capture Nadim, who he's captured, and he's trying to, you know, seduce with his magic every night, and you're trying to get in there and get her out. But he knows that. He has guards, he has henchmen, all this stuff, and he's set traps and, and things. He has people that work for him. Some are loyal, some are not, maybe. And you're trying to get in here, and he knows you're coming. So every day, he kind of, like, changes the plans. Maybe he turns on his alarm system. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he, he tells more guards to show up for their shift tonight. You know? Maybe he lets the dogs out. I don't know. But that's what these are kind of doing, and we'll draw three of these to set us up. Okay, so let's grab... Uh, it is not a neoprene mat. I figured it would have been obvious. I'm sorry, guys, that you can't tell. But this is just one of those fold-out posters, okay? Which I think are complete garbage. When they come in games, I laugh. And I think they're garbage. And something this publisher seems to do. I don't know if there's neoprene options on the Kickstarter. Or that will be added later. Or in stretch goals, I have no idea. But after playing with so many games that have a neoprene mat like this... Uh you know, that, that replace their board with neoprene or cardboard. I kind of wish it was just a fold-out cardboard board at least, because this paper is not durable. It will rip. It will bend. It has the creases in it, you know, that kind of thing. It gets glare, so if you have, like, a light, a bright light in the room, it will reflect glare off of it very easily. Not a fan. So if you don't like playing on posters, I mean, you don't need this. You can, If you just know the layout, you can set it up however you want. This just helps you get started. And the art on it looks nice. I'll, I'll give it that. But it is paper 100%. It's like a poster. So if you guys know those like posters, it's too bad it wasn't like rolled up instead. But it has like the creases in it. I, I put some heavy stuff on it overnight to try to like flatten it out a bit. But yeah, there's another one in this expansion too. I'll show you that because it doesn't have cards on it. But yeah, just for those curious. It's literally made of like a little bit thicker paper than the uh, rule book. But it's like this. So on one side, you know, if you don't want to play on it, you can put it up on your wall. And it's a poster. So the same thing with this Nadim one, or Nadimi, Nadame, Nadimi. And then on the other side is this in the other expansion. So it's just one of those paper like mats, which I, I don't know why people still print these, but they're a thing, I guess. I don't know, somebody thought it was okay. <laughs> but it wasn't the players, that's for sure. All right. 
Uh, yeah. Okay. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, it's like neoprene mats, are my understanding, if you print them in bulk, like, you know, they cost like $20 retail. So I'm assuming like, you know, but again, it could have just been cardboard. Like, I'd be totally cool if this was just a fold-out normal board game board. Like, thicker cardboard, durable, won't get ripped. You know. That's what I wish. But just so you guys know, I know you guys are asking in the chat if it was neoprene. It's definitely not neoprene. Definitely not neoprene. But it's like thin, thin poster paper. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. Usually companies will do that, and then they have like an upgrade option to kind of upsell you on. Uh, so I don't know if that exists or it's coming. Again, no idea. All right. Uh, okay. So where were we at? We were drawing Hasbro all cards. Those are over here. Hasbro ball. Okay, let's draw. One, two, three. Okay. This is going to get us set up. Let's see how bad this is going to get for us. A raised alert. So Sultan Hasbro ball has instructed his palace guards to be especially watchful this night. Increase the alert stage of the current palace exploration by one level and use the corresponding time scale. So normally we start on quiet night. And how the time scale works in this. So normally the time scale you guys have seen before. Those little cards where we've set a whole bunch of time tokens on. You know. And we're removing them at the end of the round. And we're triggering effects when they happen. This is similar. But it kind of goes around in a wheel. So you just put one time token on it. Starts in a certain spot that says start. And then every round you move it forward. And eventually you'll spawn more enemies when it hits a certain spot. The cool part is, uh, he just he just told more guards to show up for the ship tonight, or hired some new guards. So we're not starting on quiet night. We're starting on regular guard duty. So he didn't let anyone have the night off. So at least that. It could raise again. He could raise it again. But regular guard duty, if you notice, there's more enemy spawns happening. So that's kind of annoying. Okay. Uh, so that's done. Where are we putting this stuff? I don't know, we'll put it right there. Okay, next one. Extinguished lights. Tonight, Sultan Hazrabal extinguishes all lights. The palace lies dark and silent before you. Carefully, you sneak through the darkness, expecting the worst. After moving your hero token, you may not reveal all adjacent face-down pile card or palace cards as usual. Instead, you may only reveal one palace card of your choice. You may move the hero token on to face-down palace cards during this palace exploration. Reveal the card after moving to it. Apply its effects immediately. If the card is a locked card, the hero remains in their current card instead, which counts as though the hero just moved onto it. Okay, so we got to remember we're playing with this, like, lights out thing. Extinguish lights, that's new. Oh, and we've raised the alerts again. So this is going to be a crazy run. So I had the same thing happen on yesterday's attempt. So I'm starting from scratch again. I've reset everything. But on yesterday's attempt, I had the same thing happen. Uh, and it, it's, it's scary how many enemies you're dealing with so quickly. Uh, so you know this playthrough, or this uh, exploration, this run, is not going to be that long for sure. <laughs> is what my prediction is, unless I get some good defense cards going. Uh, so we're going to go to Alerted Guards. So now the level's gone up even more. So we're going to have more guards. Uh, yeah. We have more guards roaming the palace in no time. Okay, we're going to get one henchman to start. But we do have an apprentice sorcerer, human servant mage, palace guard. Now, these henchmen work different in this scenario. They are made so they work with any expansion. So they have normal attacks, rolling dice. They have little rules and stuff. But in this expansion, literally every enemy just attacks. And if you defeat them, instead of getting a fate point, you have to follow the defeated text. But if you're playing with these guys in any other expansion, you ignore the defeated text and just take a fate token like normal. Okay, so these are like dual use henchmen. So that's our palace guard. And our apprentice sorcerer. She's going to have two health. When she's defeated, we'll shuffle a fortune card in. We'll talk about fortune cards. I may be doing setup a little out of order, but we'll figure it out. Okay, uh, so we did the hazard ball card, so that'll help us know how it's going to work. Okay, so these are all our rooms. Okay, I'm going to shuffle this a little bit, but I've been shuffling it already. Quipster says, remember the guards are like you, except they took an arrow to the knee once. <laughs> I was a blacksmith, and then I took an arrow to the knee. 
Skyrim humor. Skyrim humor. Uh. So you got every time you play, uh, you could have different things happen. So we we have extinguished lights happening. But for example, you could raise the alerts even more. Dark fortune. Uh, it messes with the fate deck. Overslept. Start with four hands in, or four cards in hand instead of five. And you have to discard the bottom five cards of your draw pile. That reminds me. We'll talk about that too. So there's other other things that can happen. Uh, Nadime could could start with less life. So every time you play, there's like little things messing with the the run you're about to do, and it changes. So even though you think I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna go a bunch of rooms, do a bunch of things, you're like, oh crap! This time she's damaged. I have less cards, uh, or there's more enemies appearing. Maybe I don't do that this time. Maybe I change up my strategy based on how it's starting this time, uh, which just changes every time you play, which is cool. All right. Uh, so the other thing that can happen, which I forgot, is uh, another way you can lose and it ends the adventure or the the expedition run is if your deck runs out. So if you've gotten all your cards drawn out of your deck, you're done. So that's another timer on the game. So we have to keep an eye on Nadime's health. We have to keep an eye on our deck. We have to keep an eye on our health. You know, make sure we don't get captured. Uh, and you know, you're kind of like watching all these things and pushing your luck. So now my question to you guys in the chat is, whoever is first, uh, we can decide where to put the courtyard. And we can choose any location. We'll call this column A, B, C, D, E, F. And we got rows 1, 2, 3, 4. And remember, if you put it on the edge, you have less options of directions to move because you can't move off the map. So whoever can give me a letter and a number first uh, from A to F and a number from 1 to 4 to choose which space we start in. We'll just do it randomly this time. I don't know the perfect strategy or anything. Again, this is all randomly generated rooms. I just think you don't want to start like in a corner. C4 says Brian. Brian S is the quickest on on the keys there. So C4, A, B, C, and then one, two, three, four. All right, we're starting down here. C4. <laughs> Oh, Jim, ha 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 ha. So Jim Benny in the chat, uh, one of our producers of the channel, sent me his game of Aventure and a few expansions. I think because he played a bunch of it, he's kind of moved on to other games and thought we might find some fun playing it on the channel. Uh, now that he's seen just the setup for this expansion, he's already saying he regrets sending me his copy of the game. Uh, if he knew this stuff was coming, he wouldn't have sent it to us. <laughs> Sucker. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Uh, Matt, um, there is a column F, but there's no row U, so uh, I think you may have mistyped there. <laughs> you, may have, you may have picked the wrong column and space, Matt, just so you know, okay? Um, so you might, you might want to just check again. And yes, we have more options if the card's not on the border, but Brian was the fastest to type in the chat, so we're starting on C4. I don't care. We're going to see what happens. <laughs> you sunk my battleship. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to place the room cards out just randomly here. And every time you do this, even if, you know, you're on another attempt, every time you make a run, it's randomly placed. And again, some of these rooms will change based on progress you make in a single, um, what do I keep calling it? An expedition? Forgetting the terminology. Or exploration. Exploration is a run. Okay, so we put our little thing on here, our little our character token. We're at the courtyard uh, with Mirabon here. And now uh, we still reveal the whole row to start. We get to reveal the whole row, even though we are in extinguished lights. Uh, that only matters after we move. It does not affect the setup. So we're literally going to reveal the whole row. And we're not going to read all these cards. I'm going to leave it like mysterious because I know you guys can't read it all from that distance. I don't think. I hope not. Otherwise, 1080p is way better than it should be. Um, so we're going to flip the whole row and the whole column. And you guys can see titles, and I'll, I'll explain the titles to you. But I've not read all these cards. I don't want to read all these cards. You can, though. They're face up. You're allowed to look at them before you move to them. But we'll have some fun here. Oh, okay, okay. So we have some locked rooms. So any of these rooms with skulls on them, and I didn't see these when I played yesterday. But they are locked rooms, okay? And when you have a locked room up here next to the courtyard, uh, that blocks the way you can move because you can't get in a locked room until you remove that little doom token. So 
the bedchamber appeared here. So what I'm allowed to do and, and the harem uh, are both beside the courtyard. So this literally only gives me one option to move. I can't go diagonal, uh, I don't think. Uh, so I can go here to the bathroom only. But these are locked. So now it's like literally locked us on like this area of the map. So what you're allowed to do is actually take them if they appear next to the courtyard. And you could switch them with any other revealed room. We also have the observatory, which is locked over here. Ugh. But again, to find how to open these, you have to, you're not allowed to enter until you've done some other story card that lets you into that location. So I think we'll just kind of like slide these like so. We'll throw this locked room up here, I guess, for now. I don't know. The bedchamber, I think, is where we find Nad Nadime. She's in there. That's like the final locked room. There is no way we're getting in there on this run because that's like impossible. So I say we just throw her over here. And we'll put the box room here. And then we just get all our locked rooms like as far away from us as possible. That's a Turkish bath? Is that, the, is that what it is? <laughs> uh... chat or if you guys have any questions uh, let me know our board location all right all right so again i've not played this so if there's any in the chat that have played it and know it very well please don't spoil anything we're gonna have some fun here uh and if we go to random places and it kills us we're okay with that we're just showing you today how the flow of the game works how this is different than normal aventuria and how it's very clever. I, I really do like it from when I played yesterday. I've only played for like about an hour and a half trying to figure it out. Um, so I didn't really get much done, but it was still pretty cool. All right. Uh, what else we need to do? So the guards are done. If there's only one heart card with the heart side face up in the space below, you also receive the fight for Nadime's heart card, which we don't receive. So you have five out of five health right now. Um, oh, we need to make our fortune deck, right? Fate, or fate card, fate cards, okay? So there's these fate cards. So if you guys know, normally you have uh, fate tokens, which can let you reroll skill rolls, attacks, spend them for endurance costs, or draw new cards. In this expansion, you cannot use these to reroll skill rolls, uh, like on these kind of story card tests or whatever. Uh, and some of these cards... Like this one, we have a new icon here, which is draw a fate card, okay? That means draw a fate card, that little green uh, rectangle with an eyeball in it. And what you'll do is you'll draw a card from our fate card pile down here. So to create this fate card pile, uh, we're gonna add in one to start. It will change as we play the game. So this is a great fortune we're gonna put in there. We're gonna put in a fortune. This is kind of like critical success, success. And this is failure and What's the other one called? Uh, critical failure. Okay, we're gonna put these in here and this is gonna create our starting fate card deck. So not only are you rolling skill rolls, but if you hit a failure, sometimes you'll be drawing a card to find out if you actually succeed. Maybe you fail even worse uh, and you'll have to do something else. So it's kind of fun. Uh, you can kill bad guys and they will sometimes add cards to here. Uh, there's other ways cards can be added or taken out of here. Uh, you can draw cards from here in other ways. Uh, but it's a cool little add-on uh, to the fate system, which I like. I think it's really neat. <laughs> well, Volkira says, Rob, can you keep talking for about 20, 20 more minutes? Uh, I have to take my son to foosball training. Be right back. <laughs> All right, I'll just talk slower. So I'm shuffling my fate deck and putting it here okay. all right um and bob says if we have any questions rob we'll go to the horse's mouth and ask christian yes please by all means but if christian's not responding he fell asleep on his keyboard or anything weird uh feel free to just ask in general in the chat just ask general questions christian might answer other players in the chat who might have played this already might answer uh, or I can try to answer as best I can, uh, but feel free to ask. 
There may be questions that you might not want to ask the publisher, you know, about how cool it is to put a poster as your playmat that you might want to ask me directly. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Brian S says something's wrong with my video. It slowed down. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see what else we have to do. Time scale. We've set that up. Uh, now we do our regular preparations. Okay. So we're just going to do a quick shuffle on our deck. Um, what else do we need to do? I think much. Well, now we're just into regular stuff. And the fake cards, I'll show you more of that as we play. Uh, and then, like I said, there's now a new step in the turn order is uh, movement around the palace. So we start here, and we're using our little, little hero token. Again, not all the heroes come with this, so I'm not sure what you're supposed to do. I guess you could play with like the starter player or just use any player token that's in the core set. Oh, and yes, you do need the base, the base box to play with this expansion. It's not standalone. So FYI, FYI, this character I'm playing with, uh, Mirban, I believe she is from the core set. She's the mage from the core set. Um, none of the henchmen are from the core set yet, but I do, I did run into, um, it, it could ask for even henchmen from the core set to be pulled in or from your collection in general. I did learn that yesterday, so things like that can come up. So keep your core set cards nearby. You may need to grab things from them. And the tokens and things, obviously. Alright. Okay, so let's draw. We get five cards to start. Let's do the usual. Okay, I'm pretty sure... Yep, I think that's it. I'm pretty sure I remembered everything. Um, yeah, I think so. All right, what do we got? Holy red cards. We got a whole whack ton of red cards to start here. Uh, hmm, I don't need to heal. I... Oh, I do like this card. I do like this card to start, if I remember correctly. It's been a while since I played this character, but you lose one health to gain, plus two endurance till the end of the turn. Yeah, I'm a fan. I'm a big fan. Uh, discard an opponent. Oh, uh, an opponent in your adventure of your choice loses two health. That gets through armor, which the sorcerer actually has three armor. So making them lose health is, it gets around that. Uh, we'll get rid of this. We don't care. We'll get rid of this. It's too expensive. But making this character lose two health might be the difference between getting it off the board. Uh, um, but it is a one shot. But I do have an ability of getting cards back from my discard pile. Nah, let's throw it away. Let's throw it away. Let's just draw four new cards. There we go. This is what I really wanted. This, again, uh, doesn't count as an attack, so we might get to get some damage through that armor or that, that defense of the enemy. Oh, another bigger magic attack. That's cool. We can work on getting these in play. ASAP. All right. These will get shuffled back in. <laughs> Christian says, early evening here for me, so I'm widely awake. I can answer all rules, lore questions, and hopefully correctly. Other stuff like pronunciation and marketing and the like is out of my area of expertise. Yes, keep that in mind, everybody. Yeah, if you have any like questions about the Kickstarter products and that kind of stuff, uh, you need to direct those to Ulysses Spiel International. You can hit up their website. They have a Facebook page, Twitter, all that stuff. You can ask questions on there. Or if you're in the Kickstarter, you can ask questions in the comments on the Kickstarter, I think, if you backed it. Um, that kind of thing. So direct your questions about that specific stuff there. Again, the Kickstarter for this is linked in the video description. For those that are just joining us live. And if you're curious about any other Aventuria playthroughs we've done on the channel, a playlist link for that is also in the video description. So you can go check out other playthroughs of this game. If you don't want to be spoiled here, but you want to know how the game works, go check those out. Okay. Yeah, we have we have a card here that we can pay up to five endurance to heal to restore two health for each endurance paid. Probably play that as a uh, endurance card, but we'll see. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what else do we need to do? So movement, movements first now. Movements first. Okay. So we have a box room. Okay, we have a box room. We have a bathroom, and we have sand wolves. 
Where do you guys want to go? Bathroom, box room, or sand wolves? Let me know in the chat. Whichever one seems to be the uh, majority, we'll just go that direction. We'll just go that direction. You can see them. Like, I can explain. I guess I should probably. Uh, so the sand wolves, there's a first entering. So the very first time we enter this, we're faced with a magical pack of sand wolves. Uh, it looks like we shuffle. Oh, this is how you add new cards into the henchman deck. Oh, and we'd have to draw a henchman. And if we fulfill this, so if there are four tokens on this card, remove it from the game and replace it with the story of the four sand wolves. So it looks like each sand wolf guy, I bet you, they put a token on this card. So it's like a progressing, a progressing uh, little story. So yeah, I, and <laughs> the real GT saying, no, 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 not the wolves. Uh, too hard for the beginning, uh, but they are there. So the box room. This gives you like a good example of what's in here. So the box room, every time you enter this one, you open a bottle you find in the box room, and the mighty djinn, Ifrit Omar, jumps out of it. He thanks you exuberantly for freeing him and places himself in your service. Remove this card from the game and replace it with the story of Ifrit Omar. Then we have the bathroom. Uh, first entering, a corpulent naked giant, 10 feet tall, with a trident in hand, suddenly rises from a pool behind you. He introduces himself as Baradarash, the master of the bath, and he says he must now unfortunately kill you. Find the Barad, Baradarash. This is the mini boss that, that we were mentioning today. We don't have to fight him on this run. We could fight him on a future run, but this is what Christian was referring to in the chat. Uh, so you'd have to fight. He's like a new leader that's constantly attacking us, and, and, and we have to fight. So it's like, it's like basically spawning a boss in play every round to mess with us already. I think that's a bad idea. So maybe we just go with, you know, the, the right here. And when you defeat it, you replace it with a story card. So these are way different than what I saw playing yesterday. Way different. There's also ongoing effect rooms that are constantly affecting you until you go and deal with them. So yeah, we're going to the box room. Yeah, definitely, Tara, we're going to the box room. Uh, we're not fighting a boss already. We're not starting a story arc that adds harder enemies into the deck. That's going to take a while. We'll go to the box room. And we'll get to reveal this card, because even though it's Extinguished Lights, we still get to flip. Every time we go into a room, we flip an adjacent card and kind of give us more options. Uh, I did want to read, sorry, I forgot to read the little story text uh, in the book to kind of set up this expansion. Which I will butcher some names here, but it says, Sultan Hazrabal ben Yukaban, also known as the Wind King, the Mage Sultan, and the Master of the Six Elements, is the absolute ruler of the Sultanate of Gorian. His enchanted palace is filled with jinn, mythical beings, and other strange creatures from the tale of the Ulamidian Knights. Only a foolish child of carelessness would dare break into the palace uninvited and risk an encounter with the Sultan or one of his dangerous servants. This is where you come in, because Caliph Abdu del Khramun hired you to do just that. Sultan Hazrabal kidnapped his daughter, uh, Nadime, and she is now imprisoned in his palace. Your task is to explore the palace, find Adime, and free her. Many other heroes have already tried, and none of them were ever seen again. But they were foolish and careless, while the Lord Rastullah himself, praised be his name, blessed you with the wisdom and skill. Surely you can succeed in your mission. All right. Oh, yeah, big shoes to fill, I guess. All right, all right. Okay, uh, so we're going to the box room. So we move. Now when you enter a room, you have to deal with any effects on it and resolve the card. Uh, and we also reveal the adjacent card. So we now have the storeroom to the north of us. And it, there's some thieves in there. And we kind of do a little, a little roll off here. <laughs> Doing a persuade roll. So we'll see if we deal with that. But right now in the box room, upon entering it, so we found the Ifrit Omar. So we're going to remove this card from the game. And this is good because it shows us like our first story card, like replacing this. So for the rest of the adventure, my understanding is this is now gone. This is back in the box. And you look in the story deck and we're going to find the story of Ifrit Omar. And I'm going to, I'm going to search through it and try not to see cards so you don't get spoiled. And I don't get spoiled. 
There it is. I'm going to throw that into play. And then you put the story deck here. And boom, now this is in the deck. And as you see, it has the same back. So every time you play, it will be shuffling this. And this will randomly be placed every time you go on an exploration, uh, you know, through the, uh, through the palace. But we'll just throw this off to the side. Over here. Okay, so let's see. Oh, it's an ongoing effect. So this is a good. I want to see this symbol. So this means an ongoing effect. So it kind of reminds all the players at the table, uh, or the player at the table, to keep referring to this to know it's something that's going to affect us. All right. Ifrit Omar is a powerful djinn and also the best storyteller in Aventuria. His stories are imbued with magical power that brings them to life. Thus, they help the traveler with his arduous tasks and serve as admonishing examples. So place one adventure token on this card. Okay. Uh, once per exploration, you may discard this token to automatically count a die roll as a critical success without rolling or cause an opponent of your choice other than Barad Arash to instantly lose half the remaining health rounded down. So we could just remove this token and make this enemy here go down to five health. But not the mini boss. Or we could do it to a wolf if we saw the wolves, for example, or whatever. Um, and then it says entering. So we, this entering text won't trigger right now. It's only when we re-enter the room. Uh, you shuffle one fortune card into your fate card pile, or the hero may immediately move again. So that's, that's now in play. That's a, a new location. So we've, we've exhausted that story path, is, is the idea. So that's a, a very quick and dirty one. Normally you have to do tests and like we saw with the Sand Wolves, that story arc from that card to get that out of play and replace it with a good one or a different one or whatever, you have to do like a longer term thing which might take multiple playthroughs, which is super neat. But sometimes it's just finding something and you flip it automatically. <laughs> hey, Brian. Uh, Brian W says, sorry, we're late. Is he dead yet? No, we just started. We just moved our first room. <laughs> okay uh now we do a normal turn so that's step zero step one is prepare so we do the normal aventure thing drawing the two cards reading up any exhausted cards and then we play up to two of them as endurance so we're gonna play that as endurance and We're going to play We're going to play this balsam as endurance. Okay, so up to two is endurance. Now we have two endurance. What are we doing? We are We're going to play this card to our discard pile. We're going to lose one health to gain two endurance till the end of the turn. Okay? That we're doing. Love doing that first turn of the game. We're down to 39 out of 40. Boom. Okay. Uh, so we have four endurance to work with for this turn. I feel like putting this in play might be a good idea. Getting some prevention of two. Uh, or... We still would be able to do a regular attack, or I just do setup and I don't attack at all. Maybe I get this into play and we just start hammering, but we can't attack yet. <laughs> nice a job. All right, so I think we're just going to put in the leather shield, maybe help keep us alive a little longer. So we'll spend two of them a disappearing endurance there, the invisible temporary endurance. We'll spend one there. And I think we'll pay one and get this attack in. Or maybe we just do a... I, I'm worried my regular attack's not really going to do anything because this, this has three shields. So I kind of don't care. But this, this sorcerer is freaking deadly. So they're always attacking. So I feel like the attack is always going to be 
me suffering a d6 plus 5. D6 plus 5 is crazy. So it's always going to be hitting for me for at least 6 damage. Oh yeah, I can attack for 0 with this spell, right? Yeah, this one has the 0 on it. That's the key. That's the key. So yeah, I will pay the last one to put this one into play. That makes sense. And this is still just the same, but at least I have it put the potential long term to be a better attack. So we're going to try to attack with this one for 0. We're going to do a attempt against our magic of 14 or less. Uh, we get a critical success, so we actually get to draw a card. Okay, we got a way to add more to our uh, range combat value for testing. Uh, and we're going to roll a d6 plus 0. And we get a 1, which literally gets blocked, so like it was a big waste, like I thought. Oh, and this should be exhausted. Alright, so not a lot happening there, unfortunately. Fortunately. Okay, so now we're going to go to the enemies, which always attack. We saw it's a d6 plus 5. Uh, so it is 7. 7. Uh, block for 2. And we'll just take 5. Oh, I should dodge roll, actually, right? Dodge roll first. Uh, we're looking for 5 or less on my dodge. A 7. We miss it. So we're still taking 5. Uh, so we're down to 34 already. That's not going to be a long run for sure. But we have to be careful. At some point we've got to get to the courtyard and get out. If enemies are going to pile up and eventually just shred through our health, uh, that's going to make it a short, chat, uh, a short run. A short run. Okay, so the enemy went. End of round. We're going to slide this token over. No new enemy. Uh, now we will do our prep. Draw two. Ready up our cards. And play up to two as endurance. Hmm. Yeah, I got some good cards in here. But unfortunately, I don't think we're going to go the range route. I mean, I love to get these in play and then have an additional range attack. But again, our range is only eight. So even if we got this in play, this is so expensive, it's going to take a while. I feel like this is not going to be a long run unless. Unless we get this into play and we're able to get through that three, uh, three armor, which we need to focus on. So I'm just going to play the bow. And I'm actually going to play this. Um, we're going to go all magic here. And we're going to put this as endurance. I, I just need the economy. ASAP. All right. Uh, so what we're going to do. We have four to work with, unfortunately. So I think we are just going to I think we maybe put this into play for now because we actually can attack with it assuming we get a successful attack roll Or I put this into play because I'm scared I'm going to lose it out of hand, which could happen, right? Could happen if we fail on a skill test. Yeah, I'd rather not lose this card. So I'm actually... Oh yeah, I forgot to move. I forgot to move. Thank you. I forgot to move. I already, I already skipped step zero, which I, I talked about forever. All right, are we going to the storeroom? Are we going to the cellar? What do you guys want to do? So cellar... The cellar is on the entering through a trap door in the floor. You enter the contorted cellar under the palace. Unfortunately, all the cellar rooms are empty and deserted. You find a note in one of the rooms that says, I'll be right back. But uh, you wait for a while, but nobody comes. If you're on this palace card at the end of your current exploration, then read on at fulfilled. Otherwise, nothing happens. Nothing at all. Fulfilled. No one is coming. Remove this card from the game. Replace it with the story. Of Master Gordoff? What? Okay. I don't know what that's all about. And then we have the storeroom, which on entering you meet a group of thieves, you make a persuade roll to try to pretend to be one of them. And that's all I'll give you on that. I feel like that's a more exciting one. <laughs> Seller at the end of the game. Okay.
So seller just doesn't do, if you're on this palace card at the end. So we have to like end our expedition on here. So what do you have to do? You have to die on here. Our exploration. So end of our current exploration. But I don't know how we end it other than running out of cards in our deck on that location. Yeah, I feel like the seller, if I'm not wrong, this is at the end of a run, right? An exploration. Then you read fulfilled. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. But we can just go there right now and it does nothing. But if we're close to like drawing out our deck or dying, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so... Oh, it's an inside joke. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure, I'll take your word for it. All right. Uh, so what do you guys want to do? Go to the cellar and then we see a new room up here? Or later, or do we want to go to the storeroom and bump into some thieves? Dying is not a good idea. Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> uh, all right. So, uh, so far, cellar is the only thing anyone's voted for. Or do we want to go to the storeroom? I'll give it like 10 seconds because of the delay. And then I'll just choose one. But I think uh, I think we're going cellar. Which is seems like a safe. Alright, we're going cellar. <laughs> okay, so entering trapdoor, nothing happens. Alright, so we're good. Uh, so we'll continue on with our turn. So yeah, we just forgot to move. Oh, we reveal this card. Which is Carpet Weaver entering. An old woman weaves a carpet and asks you to sit with her and listen to her stories. Make a willpower roll so you don't fall asleep. <laughs> very good, very good. Okay. So I am just going to... Yeah, I'm going to play the Wraith of Elements, I guess. So for three, and then a fourth one. And then we will attack with it for that fourth one. Uh, so we're going to roll looking for 14 or less. 19, we fail. So we get a fate. Throw that there. So we don't even get to attack, unfortunately. That's all good, I guess. Okay. Um, now to enemy. Enemy is going to do a d6 plus 5, unfortunately. Uh, so 6. We're going to try to dodge. 18, we don't. Uh, we're going to prevent 2 of it. Take 4. And we're already down to 30. Oh no! Alright, let's move again. Uh, so from here, we can't go to the observatory. We could enter this room. And if we enter this room, uh, we could put a fortune into the fate card pile. So another good card could go into here. Or we go to the carpet weaver. What do you guys want to do? Feel free to get involved in the chat. Suggest directions. Whatever you want. I'll do whatever. I don't care. We're just going to have some fun and discover a few things uh, in, in a run or two here. So I'm good at finding whatever. But we can't go here because it's locked. Roll the d20 before the damage roll. Uh, yeah, Jim, sorry. I forgot to mention that. So Aventure, you're supposed to roll the dodge before you take damage. Uh, but we just house ruled it to do it in the reverse order. Just because it's easier to process, sim similar to like 99% of the games that we play, how they kind of work usually. Um, so that, that's how we do it here. We just flip it. I, I don't know if it has game breaking things in certain expansions or something, but it doesn't seem like it changes much. It's just easier to like reduce half of what you roll rather than to roll after, remember a number. Did you succeed or did you not? That kind of thing. So not on the henchman card. D20 on the henchman card. What? 
I thought these guys always attack. They just always do the attack, no? No, oh, sorry, you guys missed that at the beginning when I explained how that's different in this expansion? All right, the problem with live streaming, people join in later and they're not there when we explain stuff at the beginning. Uh, but, Alice Henchman in this expansion. Unlike many other aventure adventures, the henchmen in this adventure do not enter play via threat points, and they always automatically attack your hero. Additionally, you do not receive a fate point when you defeat a henchman, but instead, you apply their defeated game effect. However, we design the henchmen so you can use them in, in other adventures as well. Therefore, we list a threat point value on the card and we use normal attack terminology. When you use them in other adventures, ignore the defeated game effect and instead take one fate token, as usual, when you defeat them. So yeah, they're just always attacking. So why, why would I be rolling? Oh. So that's like, it's, it's a bad translation or bad wording? Because when you say the word attack in rules text and it says attack on a card, how would you determine that another way? Like, I wouldn't think they would risk, risk uh, ritualistic chant or ritualistic gestures. So Christian's saying it's they automatically attack your hero, not they automatically attack your hero. Sorry, my bad translation, I guess. Yeah, you just shouldn't be using the word attack in a rule book when it, when it lines up to a specific uh, action on a card, right? So this is in bold. It's the word attack, right? So if I know the rules for this game, I'm going to assume when something tells me it automatically attack your hero, I'm going to assume it automatically does the attack ability, right? Well, that makes the game easier. <laughs> Yeah, okay. They always automatically attack your hero. Okay, so what that text is trying to tell me, what you guys are saying, is if I have a henchman... That says, uh, like this. Like, attack the starting hero is always going to be me. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I understand. We'll do it that way. Okay, because I thought it was kind of lame. Like, they're always attacking, which just makes it, like, impossible. Okay, so how do we resolve this? We can rewind. We can fix what we did, then. Okay, so let's try to fix that. Let's try to fix that. Yeah, I'm very specific with game text. If, if a rule tells me something specific, you use the same word that's on a card, I'm going to assume an attack is literally, like literally the word attack is going to link up to an attack on a card. Not a general phrasing like, because sometimes enemies literally do nothing. They don't attack. Sometimes they heal. Sometimes they hit each other. Sometimes they add a token somewhere. Those are not all attacks. So when you say automatically attack, I assume it literally means attack. Like the actual dealing damage to you is, is an attack, right? I'm not crazy. I know I'm not crazy on that one. Sometimes I get those wrong, my assumptions. But I try to follow rules like word for word. Careful with your wording. Lost in translation. All right, no worries. Okay, put that in an FAQ. <laughs> Or a different, uh, fix the rule book printing uh, before the Kickstarter delivers. <laughs> okay, so, uh, oh, let's, let's set up this enemy then. Because this enemy, I thought I literally was ignoring all this because it didn't make sense if they're only attacking. So, 
This says, for each Doom on this card, reduce the Apprentice's uh, action results by one, not below one. So it looks like it, it doesn't start with any Doom on it, but it has ways of placing Doom on it. Okay. So how many times have they gone? Just twice, right? So let's roll. Let's see what happened the first time. 14. Uh, place a Doom on the card. So we wouldn't have got hit that first round. So that was... How much do we lose? Hold on, let's just do the second one. Let's do the second one. Another 14. Okay, we're just trying to roll back and correct what we could. Uh, what we can here. So the two times it would have gone, instead of us taking damage, it literally would have just added a Doom. So we should be at... We lost one health from our card. But then we should only be at 39, right? I'm pretty sure. Yep, and we're at four endurance, so that means we've done two a turn. Okay. So this character just did a second activation. Then we'll do time. And we're going to get a new henchman. Yeah, we should be at 39. This makes the playthrough I did yesterday to figure out this game. I should have been playing for like two hours instead of one. Because I literally had a lineup of henchmen. And I was doing their attacks every single time. And getting smashed because I didn't have any way to block the damage. And my dodges were failing. And I thought, I just thought that was designed that way. So that you can't sit there forever in the dungeon. It's going to boot you out. So you're kind of like, you can't do it in one run. And you have to be very careful and not get destroyed. Which you still do. You just now have more time to explore than what I assumed. But yeah, when I saw that it's in a red box, I took that super serious. Like, okay, okay. They automatically attack. Well, there you go. You just learned something. I just learned something. Awesome. Thank you, everyone, for your help in the chat. And thank you, Christian, for uh, catching that. The henchmen in this adventure do not enter play via threat points, and the target of the attack is always your hero. That's how it should have been worded. 100% how it should have been worded. <laughs> Christian, no worries. No worries, man. It's all good. It's all good. We caught it very early. It's great. It would suck if I played, like, for, you know, four-hour stream, and I was doing it incorrectly the whole time. Might make the game look way too hard on normal. <laughs> okay, so we got an honor guard. Another palace guard. When he is uninjured... The honor guard causes a d6 worth of damage, or plus a d6. So when if he rolls his attack, he will do a d6 plus two plus a d6. Oh man, we got to injure this guy. He's got three armor also. What is with this? How come these guys aren't dressed as belly dancers with no armor on? Man, too much armor. All right. And if it's defeated, we shuffle a fortune card into the fate pile so that, that'll be a good thing if we defeat uh seven only for this one seven only go back around we're back to movement we're back to movement step zero uh we could go visit the carpet we weaver who will tell us some stories or we can go back to um the ifrit where we get to shuffle card in you guys want to go north or do you want to go west? Okay, which, which direction you guys want in the chat? Throw a north or a west. We either visit the carpet weaver, an old woman weaving a carpet. She asks you to sit here to listen to her tell stories. We can make a roll, see what happens. Or we can go back here and we stop here for a sec on one of our only good cards we've got in play. Where we could beef up our fate deck, which you guys haven't seen really in play yet. Alex wants the carpet weaver. Thank you, Alex, for suggesting that. We have a couple seconds. I know there's a delay. Yeah, I invented hardcore mode. Well, there is legendary mode in this game you can play. Uh, so if you want to do it, you get the Rob variant, you can make it even like impossible, where you literally get to explore like two rooms before you die. Uh, that's kind of what I made. <laughs> Street storeroom. Oh. Yeah, there's options. So whatever you guys want, just, just say the suggestion in the chat. So the real GT wants us to go e free, but Quipster, Para, and Alex are saying Carpet Weaver. So it looks like Carpet Weaver is the direction we're going. Feel free to get involved on, on, on these, no problem. 
And I don't know what's going to happen, which is fun. You guys hopefully don't know what's going to happen, uh, which is good. So we can have some fun. We're going Carpet Weaver. And we'll get to reveal... Uh, oh, we get to reveal one adjacent because the lights are out. We'll, we'll get to choose that. All right, so entering, an old woman weaves a carpet and asks you to sit with her and listen to her stories. Make a willpower roll so you don't fall asleep. And we'll reveal one of these randomly here. Willpower is... Our willpower is normal of 10. 10 or less. 8. Successful. Uh, before we go on, though, before we do successful... Uh, I'll just do odds evens on which room we reveal. Uh, it's even, so we're going to reveal this room. The Chimerologist. Okay, we'll look at that. And remember, we could still move to an unknown room, uh, but we don't know what we're walking into. So we could walk into a boss. We could walk into a bunch of enemies. Uh, it could be a bad card. So the problem with this... Again, that's not normal. It's because we got this random setup card that extinguished the lights. So we're having trouble finding our way around, which is very, very cool, very thematic. Okay, so we succeeded. And remember, we can't use Fate Token. I can't use this to reroll skill rolls in this expansion. Okay? Not allowed. Not allowed. All right, so read on at fulfilled. So if we failed, we would have had to draw a Fate card. I want to see that happen at some point for you guys. I saw it a lot yesterday. Uh, fulfilled. As gratitude for your courtesy, the old woman gives you a flying carpet. Remove this carpet from the game, or, or this card from the game, and replace it with the story of the flying carpet. So another card gone. Story of the flying carpet. Right here. So the story of the flying carpet is, says, woven from fine silk and embroidered with golden stars, Flying carpet, silken braid, is possessed by a vain spirit concerned with its prestige, uh, prestige at all times. To drive out its vanity, the Wind King condemned it to change hands every day. Sometimes it serves the poorest devil, other times the richest patron. Entering. So we don't do this now, only when we re-enter the space. The hero may immediately move to any face-up palace card in play. If you move your hero to the observatory, you may also remove the lock token from it. Ooh, that's right here. We found the way to get into the locked observatory. Because we can fly up there on our magic carpet. Cue Aladdin theme music. All right. Uh, all right, so let's draw two cards. A little more magic boost. Ah, one of our upgrade cards. Yes, raise the damage of your magic attacks by two. Yum, yum, yum. That's uh, one of our reward cards we got in there before on a previous stream. So we'll ready up our cards, ready up our endurance. Uh, we're going to pay uh, or play up to two cards as endurance to get up to six. Or maybe not. I don't know. Man, this is t I'm drawing like great cards here. Uh, we are going to we're going to go to five. Hmm, I really don't want to play any, but we only have four. Four. All right, I think I'm gonna play this as uh, as endurance. Unfortunately, that's so crazy. Feels so crazy, but I think we're gonna do it. And I don't want to though. But we're gonna do it. All right. And then for four, we're gonna play the call a uh, gin. This could just make him lose a D6 where the damage doesn't count as an attack. I like this card. Then we're going to spend one to use it. So we will attack. Uh, let's attack the apprentice. 
No, no, we have to damage this guy. We have to damage this guy. Let's attack the honor guard. Or not attack, but... Oh, no, sorry. We have to test. We have to test. Sorry, sorry. Uh, magic test, still 14. Oops. 7. <laughs> and then, sorry, now we do a D6 of damage to this one. Uh, which is a 6. Don't draw or anything from that. So this guy just loses 6. Doesn't count as an attack. But we don't have... Oh, yeah, we could do our free attack, right? This attack, let's do this. Let's still attack this guy. If we can get, if we can roll like a four on here, we can take this guy out. Uh, let's do the roll. Nine, less than 14, we're good. We got a four. So three will get blocked by his armor. One goes through. So when we defeat this guy, instead of getting a fate token, we shuffle a fortune card into the fate card pile. Uh, we take a fortune. And we shuffle it into our fate card pile. Yeah, he does have armor, but uh, I'm pretty sure it doesn't lose. Doesn't this just get right through armor, if I remember correctly, or am I doing that wrong too? An opponent loses a d6. I think when they lose health, it goes, doesn't it go past armor and past uh, dodge rolls and stuff? Or do I have that wrong? We can look it up if we need to. We are correct? Okay. Thank you. Thank you to Real GT. Yeah, check out the rules. Like, call me out on the rules all, all day. I'm all good. I'm not a pro at this game. I'll never admit to be. Uh, so I do appreciate the help. I do appreciate the help. Yeah, feel free to question. I don't mind. Okay. So I obviously don't get everything right. That's for sure. Who does really, though? All right. Um, so we got rid of an enemy. Great. We're ending our turn. Uh, the Apprentice Sorcerer will go. And for each token on the card, reduce the apprentice's result by one, but not below one. Oh, we may have messed that up before, too. A 10. So it's actually a 9. But it's still the same. Place a D6 worth of tokens on the card. Oh, 3. Okay, sure. I don't know. This is weird, but sure. Okay. I guess just building up to do. Oh, that just means it's it's gonna do its attack more often. Oh, then it removes tokens when it does its like harsh attack. Ah, okay, okay. I see what's happening here. She's like she's like charging up her spell to eventually like smash you, and then it has to like charge again, sort of. That's kind of neat. Alright. Uh movement. So we can go to the storeroom where the thieves are. We can go to the whatever the heck that is, a chimerologist. You meet an old woman who is sitting next to a lizard wolf, a chimera created from a wolf and lizard. The old man sadly tells you he created his creature to impress Sultan Hazraval. However, due to a mistake in the magical formula, he does not control the chimera and, or the chimera. Chimera? I forget how to say that, but. The Chimera controls him. The Lizard Wolf rises to its feet and attacks you. Search for the Lizard Wolf Henchman card and place it to the right row of the villains. Fulfilled. When you defeat the Lizard Wolf, remove this card from the game and replace it with the story of the Pilgrim. Or we can blindly move up here and see what's in here. So north, west, south, which does nothing, or east. We have four ways we can go. Looks like east. Or, oh yeah, the observatory. Uh, no, we're only allowed to do that when we enter here, I think, right? Yeah, we can't do this one until we've entered it again. Or we can stay here, right? Can we not stay here? I think it counts as entering if you stay here for the turn. We can stay still, right? Let me just double check. I believe that's how it says it. Uh, entering, where is the entering? Was that on the page? Uh, entering. Every time the hero enters a palace card with this keyword, apply the corresponding game effect. You must apply this effect every time the hero enters the palace card you cannot choose to ignore. But there is something over here about movement. Uh, the first thing you do each round is move your hero. To do so, move the hero token from its current palace card horizontally or vertically adjacent. Uh, alternatively, you may decide to keep the hero on the current palace card. This counts as the hero moving to that card, uh, the current round, with all associated game effects. 
Yeah, staying is entering then. That's what I get, right? Excellent. All right, we're on the same page. Do we want to just stay still? That's an option. That's an option. We could stay here and we could sneak up to the observatory and get into a locked room. <laughs> I mean, that's an option. So stay. We'll see into the next room. Oh yeah, and if we stay, we can reveal this room too, uh, without moving. I feel like staying is the way to go. Now with this new information that I forgot about, that you could just stay here and enter it, we can get to the observatory. I see a couple of you are saying stay now. Uh, are we cool with that? I think we're cool with that. We could still go from the observatory, possibly still get to here, which I see some of you were saying east before that. So we'll, we'll, we'll maybe go that way. But yeah, let's stay here. The hero may immediately move to any face-up card. So we're going to enter here, I believe. If you stay, there will be trouble. Uh, so we've revealed the dining room because we're going to stay where we are. And this, this on first entering, you meet three talking mice who introduce themselves as cursed princes and ask you to dance with them. Oh, what? <laughs> what is going on in this palace? What is going on? All right. So we want to go to the observatory. Let's see what the observatory says. The observatory says the Sultan's astronomical observatory is at the top of this tall, narrow tower with no stairway leading up to it. At this dizzying height, the wrong step could result in a fatal fall. Make a body control roll. <laughs> uh, I have a 10. I have a 10 for body control. <laughs> observe yeah we're going to the observatory you guys want that we're doing it all right so we'll go here and when we enter this with our magic carpet we flew here uh we may remove the lock door from it so now we can enter this without worrying about it being locked which is cool all right so now we got to do a body control roll ten or less Oh, it was a 9, it flipped to 11, so we do fail. And it says, a failure is an exclamation point. I forget what that does in this expansion. Uh, that is different. Where is that? Right here. Uh, for certain skill rules, you explicitly do not consult your fate when you get a failure result. This is indicated by an exclamation point. So we don't draw from the fate deck for this one, is what it's saying. The story of the Council of the Bird. Oh, sorry. If the story... So let's see, let's see. Uh, if the story of the Council of the Bird is face up in play, nothing happens. Otherwise, immediately reduce your health to zero. I don't see that story in play. So instantly, we're dead. All right. So we're dead. Just like that. <laughs> yeah, instant death. So this is what can happen. Like, we could have read the card to see what was an option. Rolling 10 or less, I knew we were kind of in trouble already. But that's what can happen, okay? Reroll? No, no reroll. You can't re-roll on skill rolls. Let me also read something to you interesting in the rule book in this expansion. Always listen to the Council of the Bird. Probably say don't go up there. Well, here we go. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> we want you to enjoy this adventure, but sometimes a bad die roll or unfortunate card draw may seem to spoil the fun. Since this is a solo adventure, you may be tempted to simply ignore the bad roll or unfortunate card, believe us. We have been there before. Exploring the Sultan's Palace is no exception. If fate plays an exceptionally cruel trick on you, yet again, we recommend you accept it and play the game as the die rolls and cards demand. However, in return, you may place a five point life token on your hero card. Your hero begins their next exploration with five additional life points for each token on your hero card. 
Often, simply placing the five life point token is enough to help your frustration. <laughs> well, this is to stop players from flipping their tables more often, is what this is telling me here. Because <laughs> right there, I want to flip the table. I'll be honest. All right. So we're dead. That's it. That's the end of a run. That's like how, how it can go. So we now, she is captured. We just lost access to my best hero I own. That's my favorite to play. That has upgrade cards, experience spent on her. I was hoping to avoid that. Uh, but that's what happens. So literally, this character now is imprisoned and cannot be played through this adventure anymore. And that's how that works. And I'm glad that kind of happened so we can show you. So that's it. That's it. That's this character done. Imprisoned. And that's the end of an exploration. That's a run. That's a session. That, so it could happen if you're not careful. Obviously, when you're playing, you would read the cards to know what's at stake. They're all, they're all face up. But this is like cards like if you walked into the dining room, for example, and you, it was face down because the lights were out. Uh, you may run into something that just kills you. You know what I mean? Um, so I'm kind of glad that that showed that. But look how many cards we didn't even see on a run. We only got two cards fulfilled. But they stay fulfilled. So you want to go through here and try to get as many things done on a night of sneaking in the palace. So do you see now why I'm saying set this up on a table? Perfect for solo players. You set it up on a table, like a small table. And you just keep playing over and over again. So if you have like four hours to play, you could go through like three or four runs of this thing or more if you keep failing. <laughs> but do you see how like it, it said if I had the, the, the story, the council of the bird. So if I had found that story, this wouldn't have killed me. So that's what I was talking about before where there's like that waterfall effect, right? That cascading effect, that domino effect of like, you want to, uh, you know, do certain stories and unlock certain things and fight certain enemies in a certain order that can help make it easier. So like, that's, that's what I get from that. Um, but we didn't get to see this yet. So what we can do, I'll just grab another character uh, and we'll take another run. We'll just take another run. Let's grab the character that Mel was playing with uh, the other, the last stream. Because I don't have any others really nearby and ready. So this is a character pack if you didn't watch the last stream. Uh, these are also in the Kickstarter. More information in the link in the video description. Uh, but there's these little hero packs. They come with the little adventure you can play through. They come with a full hero deck. Uh, you can play along with the adventures in the little book. And we'll just play with this uh, character. And... And I'm not going to use this. I'll just still use the dial. I'll still use the character's dial instead of uh, this card. These little health tracker cards, not a fan. So we're just going to leave that out of play. And then we obviously don't need any of her cards, I don't think. What are these? The rewards? Yeah. So we get some rewards, some story stuff. We're not going to need that. We're just going to play with the character. Okay. Okay, so yeah, let's just do a quick shuffle. We're going to do a reset. We're going to do a reset. We'll do a second run. So stay tuned. We're going to do another run. Seems to be a fair bit of you here. So we'll, we'll spoil a little bit more for you. <laughs> Maybe we'll see a lot of the same cards. Who knows? Who knows what we'll run into? But we'll see how quick we can set up another playthrough, like another run, right? Okay, let's just do that quick. Uh, this we know we just take out a fortune. And actually, let's just reset this completely. Because this could change too, based on the Hazrabal cards. Uh, that are going to change every run you make. And we're going to pick up all these rooms. Get all these tokens off here. Now, my question... Do things that are locked stay unlocked for the next run or no? That I don't know. I can't remember because I, I didn't I didn't even see a locked room on my first play uh, that I did of this yesterday. So today is my first day seeing actual locked rooms. Um, but my understanding is you keep all this stuff together. So the story progress we've done, 
uh, stays. But yeah, let me know. So we're going to see the dungeon switch up like a roguelike. We're going to see different enemies, possibly. Read the Efreet card. Efreet card says Jim. The hero oh, entering. Locked rooms are again locked. Okay, that makes it easier for setup. I was going to say, how am I going to remember what I unlocked, right? Other than taking a picture every time you play. Which, I mean, would be fine. I mean, most people have a way of taking a quick picture on a phone or whatever. D3 for the courtyards. Alex getting in there early. All right, let's do D3. A, B, C, D. One, two, three. Right here. We're going courtyard D3 this time. Every time you can choose different. How he reads it. Oh, did I miss it before? Oh, Quipster's making comments about me not paying attention to chat. So here's the balance. If I just sat and read chat the whole time, uh, it'd be a lot of dead air. So I can't read everything. And, so, and a lot of times chat, you guys are all talking amongst each other. So Quipster, I, I don't know if you're new here. I feel like I've seen you before. Um, but that's how it kind of works, especially when I'm by myself. Uh, I don't want to just sit there reading chat the whole time. It doesn't make for much of a fun video later. For the majority of people who watch this video won't be watching live. So I try to just keep the, the interaction. And, and what Jim's doing, if you can, if you notice a rules goof or something important you need to get my attention, uh, just do at Rob's gaming table, like the at symbol, like Jim, Jim Benny does in the chat there sometimes. Uh, and it highlights it on my screen and I'll notice it'll stick out. But even sometimes it scrolls off the screen. So sometimes the chat moving so quickly, I can't keep up. I don't see the whole chat. I probably only see the last like three minutes of chat, you know? Um, so it's a little tough. I I'm not the quickest at reading either. So I, I don't want to sit there and just read chat the whole stream. At the end of the playthrough, we can sit and talk and I'll, I'll interact with chat and we'll read. I'll try to catch up on some stuff. And if I missed a question, just ask it at the end of the stream while we're still here. And I'll try to answer it. You didn't have to die in the observatory. That's what it was about. Oh, okay. Why not? Why not? Did it say the e free card I didn't have to die? So... We just moved to the observatory. I know you don't have to. It says the hero may immediately move to any face-up palace card in play. If you move the hero to the observatory, you may also remove the lock token from the observatory card. Okay, so we did that. We wanted to go to the observatory just for fun. Again, we're not trying to win. I, I don't care if we win or not. We're just goofing around, just seeing things here. And then this did the whole enter. Entering the Sultan's Astronomical Observatory is at the top of this tall, narrow tower with no stairway leading up to it. At this dizzying height, one wrong step could result in a fatal fall. Make a body control roll. <laughs> we did it okay? We did right? I know that's not the smartest gameplay. I know we didn't play as efficient. We weren't reading everything on the card. And I said that. We could read the whole card if we wanted to and decide to go there or not. But I just want to have fun. We'll make a couple runs. I want to see death. I want to see a run end. Uh, you know, I want, to, I want to do a couple attempts just to show you guys. Except being captured. So when we reduced our health to zero, uh, we have to go to, where is it? Maybe I should have been more clear. I think this is how it works. So end of a palace exploration. So option two happens. So it can end in one of four ways. We either rescue Nadime. Hero's life points drop to zero. 
The current palace exploration ends immediately. D3 below for the procedure, and the hero is imprisoned. Remove that hero's cards and hero deck from the game for the remainder of the adventure. Sultan Hasbaral and his henchmen captured the hero and threw him into the dungeon. This hero is not available for, during subsequent explorations. You must choose a different hero instead. The new hero does benefit from their predecessor's achievements. The palace cards that were fulfilled and replaced with story cards still count as being fulfilled. However, if all your heroes are in prison, you lose the adventure. You must start again from the beginning, at which point all heroes are available again. So step three. Uh, the hero could also retreat, but we didn't, but we're going to follow this. If you move your hero to the courtyard card, you can decide to make a hasty retreat. Shuffle all active palace cards, including any story that replace cards, into a pile from which you randomly rebuild the palace during the next exploration. Thus, the hero benefits from palace cards they already solved, even though the Sultan's powerful magic causes them to rearrange the cha and, and change every night. Return all other cards and piles to their original states before the next palace exploration begins. This means that the hero starts the next exploration with 40 health and a freshly shuffled hero deck. The henchman pile contains only palace cards, and the hero's fate card pile contains exactly one fate card of each type. Or you draw out your deck. Is that good? <laughs> Christian says, streaming is not about winning, it's about entertainment. Uh, sometimes here, I forget about the entertainment part, and we get serious, and we try to win at all costs. <laughs> we can get too competitive on the channel, but that's why I keep saying today, we're just having fun. We're just, we're going to explore a little bit. I just want to show how it works, you know, on a couple explorations and leave the rest up to you guys if you want to play it on your own and that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm very okay with losing in this one because I know we can't win. I'm not going to stay here for like 20 hours until we beat it, right? <laughs> if we beat it. And then I have to keep grabbing new characters and, and, and working out, you know? But I just want to have fun today and we just explore randomly. Like normally, yes, if you're playing this solo, you could sit here and read every single option and outweigh the risk and reward and try to be very methodical with it. That's why this is a very good solo expansion, why it's very focused at solo. But we have the chat watching. So we're just we're just having fun. We're playing like, you know, let's just choose some random stuff and see, see what you guys would want to see again. But you don't have full information. So, you know, we're just going to goof around with it. But again, if you want to play it your way, you go the Kickstarter link down in the video description and you can you can make better decisions than we will. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> Matt says, Rob, I don't pay you to lose. Oh, Matt's one of our producers. I'm getting Sorry, guys, I'm getting yelled at by one of our producers. <laughs> And, oh, yes. So Valkyra is making a good point. So this is technically pay to win uh, because the more expansions you own and the more heroes you own, the more attempts you can have and keep failing. Then you could just keep grabbing a new hero and trying over again. So sneakily, it was designed to sell more expansions is what I think. <laughs> just kidding. You could always just retreat, right? You could just go back to the courtyard and run away and just get a little bit done every play. But you have to be careful. If you don't have a lot of characters to play with, and you're going to be, uh, you know, not let yourself play with imprisoned characters. Uh, you have to be careful. But again, if you own all the Aventria stuff, you have way more characters than you need to count. You could just keep trying and dying and who cares. But again, if you have a character you spent lots of time on and you've upgraded, you know, you might not want to put them at risk like I did. I definitely wouldn't want to. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have started with, uh, with her first uh, if I was being serious with it. I would have played with a character I don't care about. And just poke around and learn some things. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we'll just put those there for now. Henchmen. We'll shuffle them up. A little quick shuffle. Oop. And we'll just set one up. Oh, no. Our first enemy is a guardian djinn. For each, for each close combat attack against the Jinn or an opponent to his immediate left or right, the attacker loses a d6 worth of health. The effects of multiple Guardian Jinns do not stack. So he's got no armor, 14 health. On a 1 to 3 attacks, on a 4 to 20, nothing. He just keeps watch. So we're just magic attack. Oh no, with this character, it's range. Or a close. Again, I wish I was playing my other character because magic would like destroy this guy. 
But when we defeat him, we shuffle a misfortune card into the fate card pile. That's no good. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, okay. We got an Ifrit. With a bunch of these little tokens. I just want to show you guys, see how different it is on this run. I don't know. These tokens are not my jam. Not my... All right, there we go. That's better. Okay. Uh, so let's shuffle these up. Sorry. Flip that. Okay. We're going to play normal again. So five health on Nadim. Uh, we're going to draw three of these cards. And we'll see how the time scale sets up, but it could be different. So it's going to start at quiet night again. Okay. So this time... We have the alert raise twice again, so that's lame. So we're still going to be on alerted guards, I believe. Yeah, alerted guards, so the same, the same uh, time scale we had last time. So this is a new one. Sultan Hasbral casts a powerful spell that locks the doors to an entire wing of his palace. No matter how hard you try, you cannot get in there tonight. Remove four random cards from your palace card pile. Excluding the courtyard card. Now, and set them aside. You do not use these cards during the current palace exploration. So the palace consists of only a 4x5 cards when building it for its, this exploration. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I'll just take the 4 off the top. I don't know. Okay. So we may not see the story cards we just earned and put in here. They might be gone. That's cool. <laughs> Okay, so four by five. I don't know. I guess we can start like here. I don't know. We'll build it around our courtyard. Okay. Oh, that. Uh, let's build our little deck of fate since it's normal. Didn't get adjusted. <laughs> so will there be an end? Uh, I don't know. We'll probably die again. We'll see. Uh, GH is asking in the chat, is the new to Adventuria pledge on the Kickstarter the only way to buy the base game at the moment? Apologies if it's already been answered. Uh, no, you can get the base game at retail. I just don't know if it's the latest printing. They did a Kickstarter for a newer refined version of the English uh, core set which I know some people have gotten. Uh, Kanjay Studios, I think, is playing with the later edition of the core set. So it has to be out there. Uh, I think he got it on Amazon or something uh, in the US. So no, you can buy just the base game through retail. Uh, your local game store can probably order it. Um, so yeah, you are able to buy it without the Kickstarter. You also can play this on Tabletop Simulator and even attempt uh, to play with the hero I'm playing with. Uh, so there is a tabletop simulator mod for Aventuria, FYI. How to do, how to get it? I don't know, <laughs> but it's out there. You can find more information on the publisher's website. Okay. Uh, anything else? It's nope. Okay. Draw one, two, three, four, five. I don't know what cards are good in this deck. I don't know any cards in this deck really. Six magic attack for free? Okay, yeah, I'll keep that. Extra one point of damage on a weapon? Sure. Now, I like this, but that's expensive. But this is like the kind of thing we need against lots of armor, but this, this guy doesn't have armor right now. And we do want to attack only range. I don't know. I think I'm going to toss this, actually. Even though I probably should keep it.
Yeah, let's just throw all these. We're going to just draw one, two, three. Okay. Shuffle these in. Yeah, so I forgot to mention my character's ability last time, and I keep forgetting to use it. But it has a one-time ability, Potent Potion, on this character. Once per combat, remove any number of whatever those cards are in your discard pile from the game. An opponent of your choice loses that number of health. Ooh, that's cool. But how many of those do I have? Oh, they're equipment cards. Equipment cards. I think I have quite a few, actually. Okay. Equipment cards. Mel, Mel, when she played this deck, found it very expensive. All right, all right. So draw a pile here. Okay. Uh, now what? We move. Oh, yeah. Let's do the whole row, right? We forgot to reveal. The guard room. The bed chamber's back. That's where Nadim A is snoozing. The dance of the veils. Whatever the heck that's all about. And... The flower garden, the herb garden, the kitchen, and this card again, the Kremurologist, the lizard wolf. We didn't get any locked rooms beside us, so we don't need to flip anything around. But look how many different locations we see this time. None of them are our story events that we uh, succeeded on. <laughs> oh no. Okay. <laughs> All right. So our options are let's read the options carefully this time. <laughs> the guard room. First entering. In this small room near the entrance gate, two guards sleep the sleep of the ignorant. Decide whether you want to stab them in their sleep or avoid the guard room, then draw a fate card. On a fortune or great fortune, the guards are innocent monks forced into servants by Hazrabal. On a misfortune or great misfortune, the guards are evil men who deserve to die. If you daggered evil guards or avoided innocent guards, shuffle three fortune cards into the fate pile. If you daggered innocent guards or avoided evil guards, shuffle three misfortune cards into the fate pile. <laughs> that is an awesome card. That is an awesome card. <laughs> There's also the flower garden. On first entering, you fall for a mermaid story and end up as a carp in a pond. You must try to soften her, start, her heart with a well-told story. Make a skill roll against a skill value of X, where X is the number of face-up story cards in play. We have none in play. We have none in play. So we do not want to go here. We, like, we literally fail the test. That's how I understand that. So Flower Garden is like a long-term play. We don't want to do that. No, no, no. Although, although... I assume as long as we just fail, we could draw a fate card and still succeed, though. We could still succeed, but right now in our fate card deck, we have one of each. One of each of either critical success, failure, or critical failure. So there is a chance we could go there, even rolling a die against nothing and failing, we could still draw and still succeed. It's a cool little mechanic. I, I, I like it. Uh, it still could work out for you, but it could still be bad. Then we have the... Oh, actually, let's check the Flower Garden. If we were to do that, would we lose? A failure would just lose a d6 and roll again. Oh, and you have to do it again and again. Oh, no. Or a failure. I mean, a critical failure. We have to do the failure, but we lose 2d6 worth of health. No, no, we don't want to do this. This could be very bad. Very, very bad. Then we have the herb garden. 
Azrabal cultivates numerous magical herbs in this garden, herbs with both positive and negative effects. When entering, make a survival roll to prove your plant knowledge. Our survival is 10. We'd have to roll a 10 or less on a d20. If we're critical succeeding, if we get a one, we shuffle one great fortune and one fortune into the fate card pile. If we succeed, one great fortune, one fortune, and a misfortune. If we fail, we shuffle, and it's just like putting, putting worse cards in the deck. So this just messes with our fate deck. And the Dance of the Veils. The Dance of the Veils. Entering, make a draw pile from the nine veil dance cards. Make a stealth roll to watch the dance without being noticed. So I'm just going to look at the failure effects here. We would draw a fate card, which could change what happens. Draw one henchman card, place it into the row of, uh, right of the row of villains, and draw a veil dance card, apply its effect. A critical failure could get two more henchmen, and we draw a veil card. But we could fulfill this and get a story card. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Wherever you guys want to go. Guard room to the north, flower garden to the right. But I, I, don't, I don't think we do flower garden. I feel like that's like, we're going to die. Uh, possibly, or faster. Uh, herb garden or dance of veils. North, west, east, south. I'm going to say east is out. So either north, west, or south. Alex is saying west to the herb garden. Okay. <laughs> all hard dropping a spoiler i guess in the chat here lol this scenario is based on the dark eyes 80 rpg solo module for kids whatever you do don't dance with the mice whatever the heck that means we did see a room that had three little mice in it but we didn't deal with that card but that is funny Looks like north is, is where we're going. Jim wants random. No, we're not doing random. We're going to go north. Guard room. Okay. Uh, so first entering. In this small room near the entrance gate, two guards sleep. Uh, sleep the sleep of the ignorant. Decide whether you want to stab them in their sleep or avoid the guard room. Stab or avoid. Then we're going to do a fate card. Or sorry, fate card. And depending on that, we either have stabbed the right or wrong people, or we've avoided the right or wrong people. <laughs> so what are we doing? Stabby stab stab, says Dragon. <laughs> All right, stabby stab. And now let's draw a fate card. Great misfortune. Did we stab the right people? So that goes out of the deck into the pile here. Uh, a great misfortune. Great misfortune is the guards are evil men who deserve to die. I think we did it right. If you daggered evil guards or avoided instant guards, shuffle, shuffle three fortune cards into the fate pile. I feel like we did good there. So three fortune cards. One, two, three. These are like good cards. We want to we want to draw these more often uh, because they could lead. So they'll go into here with a fortune, a misfortune, and a great fortune. See how good our odds are now. <laughs> Stabby McStab face to the four. Paint them green. See if they get angry. <laughs> All right. So we'll shuffle those in. Yeah, that worked out good. All right. So now we're going to draw two cards. Oh, we forgot to reveal. I forgot to reveal. So the room's adjacent. Oh, we found our Efreet card. So if we enter this one, we can shuffle another fortune card from the fate pile into the deck and move again. But we are going to put a token on here. And remember, this token... That token can be spent once per exploration. To automatically count a... Oh! We sh you guys wanted me to read this card. <laughs> well, you guys are talking about the, the I, I thought you were talking about the carpet card. I just got it now. I just got it. Wow. You guys wanted me to use this effect to reroll a die roll for critical success. So 
So yeah, we didn't have to die before. We could have made it a critical success. There we go. I didn't realize you guys were talking about this card. I thought you were talking about the card we came from. I get it now. I get it. Wow. I forgot about that card completely. <laughs> Woo. I'm going to get comments on this video later, timestamping that going, you idiot, read the card in whichever column in row. Yeah, yeah. If, if, I'm, if I forget about a card, just, just mention the, like, the row and the column, right? Maybe that's a, the way we should do it. I don't know. I forgot about what that card was called. Oh, but once you made the skill roll, Ifri could not help you anymore, says Christian. Oh, yes. Yeah, you have to choose in advance, right? Once per expiration, you may discard the token to automatically count it as critical success without rolling. So, okay. So I should have done that. So really what you would have do if you're playing, if I was playing serious and like we're trying to win, I would have probably not even gone to the observatory because I wouldn't want to waste that ability, right? But if we go there, we could have decided to just spend the token right away to critically succeed, which we should have probably done in that case. But we didn't. It's all good. But we couldn't do it after we rolled. There we go. <laughs> oh, man. All right. I don't remember what I was doing. But uh, yeah, we're definitely ending after this run. We're de definitely ending after this run. I make too many mistakes today. All right, um, and then this one we have to reveal. Oh, in case we have to go, we found the bathroom. Which is that, like, mini boss. That little mini boss. If we go there. All right, so we drew, what do we have? We drew one. We need to draw one more card, right? Okay, we're going to put that as endurance. And we're going to put this as endurance. Okay. I don't know. Uh, let's just add one to our hero's dodge, putting it at six. Not anything to write home about, but we're going to do it. Uh, then we're going to spend an endurance uh, to attack with our basic throwing daggers, which are ranged, so we don't have to worry about this close combat uh, junk on the uh, enemy up there. And we're going to see if we attack. We're looking for an 11 or less. 18, we fail. So we get one of these. Uh, now I'm going to... I think I'll just spend this to draw a card. Poison. Uh, in an adventure, discard this card and name a henchman with seven or less health. That henchman is immediately defeated. Hmm. Hmm. Gotta do some damage, it looks like. Okay. Uh, enemy. He is going to roll a d20. Got a 16, which does nothing. He keeps watch. All right, where are we moving? We can't go to the bedchamber. It's locked. The bedroom is a boss fight. The, uh, the, the entering here gets us a fortune card. It will reveal two new locations. But we get another fortune shuffled into our fate deck. Or we can move to the south, and then we get to move again. So even going to the courtyard, we could still branch out. So we can, in one move, get to like the Dance of the Veils, the Flower Garden, the Herb Garden, whatever. Got an east or a left? East, says Bob. East, says Alex. All right, let's go east. East is the majority right now. I feel like we'll wait a sec. Oh, advance the time card. Yes, thank you. Yeah, no new henchmen yet, but soon. But soon, time scale goes. All right, going east. Uh, so when we enter, put a fortune, shuffle a fortune card in your fate card pile, or the hero may immediately move again. Hmm. 
let's see what we get first. Oh, there's our flying carpet. There's our flying carpets back. Okay. This one. Oops. Got the cellar, which we know going on, it does nothing unless we're here at the end of our exploration. So we would go there if we were like almost out of cards, maybe, and just go there. All right, do we just shuffle a fortune in or do we move again? We could go to the cellar, does nothing but reveal this card. We can go to the flying carpet, does nothing. We can go to the flower garden. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Lots of options, but see how, how, like, how many decision points there are. Fortune. Okay, we'll stay here, get a fortune. I know, that's obviously like the best play. Like if you can make this deck, the fate deck, succeed like a lot. Uh, more often, obviously good. Yeah, fortune card. Okay, you guys are on the same page. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. We only have one fortune card left, and then we can't put any more in. So we pull some out. Okay. Okay. Uh, so we're done moving. We will draw two. Guard this card to lower the die result of one of your attacks or tests by four. That costs two. Ew. Uh, range test. Your opponent loses seven, doesn't count as an attack. I like that one. That one. Ready up. One of those in there. I don't know. I'm thinking of just throwing the heel in there. Like, whatever. Okay, so we have four endurance. Get like a second attack going. Could get a magic attack going. Yeah, let's play this for free. Which just lets us have an option for doing magic attacks. Okay. Let's... Uh, let's just spend one, and we'll attach, I mean, it's probably not the best play, but we'll just do it anyway. We'll just uh, attach a uh, poison to this spell. Are we allowed to? Oh, no, it's got to be a weapon. It's got to be a weapon, I think. I don't know if that's considered a weapon. Throwing daggers are a weapon. No, let's save that. Let's save that. Let's play this. Let's play this and increase our range attack. Let's just do that. Let's just do that. Okay, so we buffed up now 14 or less on a range attack succeeds. We'll spend our last endurance. And let's just do that range attack on our throwing daggers then. Seven, that succeeds. So a d6 plus one. Uh, it's four. We do four damage to this guy. Out of 10. And yeah, it wasn't a melee attack, so we don't have to worry about any kind of problems. And there's no armor. And no dodge. So we're good, right? Uh, okay. So now the enemy, he's going to go. Roll a d20. Whoops. 10. Uh, nothing happens. Keeps watch. Okay. We'll move this token. We'll get another henchman. Oh, we got another honor guard's back. And he's uninjured. He also adds a plus D6 worth of damage to his attacks. Also can heal. We'll give him seven. Seven. Mermaid's waiting for me. Okay. Uh, now we draw two. Ready up. Yeah, I think uh, Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro called, and they want their card back. 
want their card back. <laughs> Black Lotus Poison. Place the, place the top card of your draw pile face down under this card. Max four cards. If this card leaves play or changes ownership, discard all cards under this card. For exhausting it, a magic test plus five, so it's easier. So we would need to hit 12 or less. An opponent loses two health per card under this card. This does not count as an attack. Afterward, discard this card and all cards under this card. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to move, right? I forgot to move. Yeah, yeah. Move first. We're moving, we're moving. I forgot to move. I thought about it for a second. I'm like, why am I still there? Okay. Sorry. Play Aventure without this step every single time. It's hard to, to remember to do it. Um, but yeah. Also going to be hard now to go back playing regular Aventure after playing this stuff. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, okay, where do we want to move? Do we want to go flying carpet, cellar, guard room, flower garden? Stay where we are. South to the mermaid. Okay. Yeah, I'm good. If, if, if it knocks us out, I'm totally okay with that. We can choose to make it critical off this, right? Yeah, let's just do that. Let's just do that. Let's go south. Flower garden. Uh, first entering, you fall for a mermaid story and end up as a carp in a pond. You must try to soften her heart with a well-told story. Make a skill roll against a skill value of X where X is the number of face-up story cards in play. Two. But before rolling, we are going to spend this token. And that token says uh, we can automatically count as a critical success. And so we read the fulfilled, and additionally, we shuffle two fortune cards into the fate card pile. So the only one left, we'll just shuffle that in. Uh, so the fulfilled says, the mermaid has mercy on you. She sets you free and gives you a silk scarf. Remember this card from the game, or sorry, remove this card from the game and replace it with the story of the silk scarf. Story of the silk scarf. So the story of the silk scarf, a woman sits next to a pond weeping bitterly. Her lover, who was turned into a golden cart by a jealous gin, lives in the pond. If she stops crying, the pond will dry up and her lover will die. A pilgrim catches a few of her tears in a silk scarf and carries it to the gin, who takes pity on her and redeems the two lovers. If this card is face up in play, Ingrid Silla has only two actions per round. So that must be some kind of boss or something. Uh, entering. When you enter this location, shuffle one great fortune card into the fate card pile. Ooh, that's a good one. That's like shuffling more critical successes in there. The so flower garden is gone. So we will never see the flower garden again. Yeah, I really wish I used that Efri in the last run. Because <laughs> it's like a free success on a, to get rid of a card sometimes, right? <laughs> Oh, Doc's here. Hey, Doc. Finally has never crub coverage. Scrubbing back to the beginning. Nice. Okay, uh, so we drew, right? Uh, now we're going to play up to two as endurance. Let's just throw the Black Lotus there. I don't know. We have a way to get rid of this guy automatically. Because he has seven... Uh, damage or less, we can just auto get rid of that guy for three. Um, you know what? Uh, let's just play this one in there. Who cares? Uh, I like to attach it to get the extra damage, but you know what? We're we're not going for the long adventure win here. We may die, so let's just uh, YOLO. Let's go crazy. All right, so we have six, uh, six endurance, and. I mean, this range attack is cool. So let's spend three. And we're just going to one-shot the henchman. Guard this card to name a henchman with seven or less health. The henchman is immediately defeated. So boom. We're going to fire on that guy. That goes in our discard pile. See ya, honor guard. 
And he shuffles a fortune card in the fate card pile. Unfortunately, it's full of fortune. So nothing happens there. That's fine. Whatever. But again, you might want to like really manage uh, how that works, right? Oh, do not reveal a card. Reveal card. Reveal card. Reveal card. Oh, right here, right? Did I not do that? Oh, south, I get it. Okay, I get it, I get it. Reveal this card, yes. Uh, harem. It's a locked room. Entering, make a knowledge roll. But we don't know how to get in here, so it's just locked. It's just locked. Uh, so we'll just throw that there, and it's just locked. So we won't talk about it, but yeah, it's, it's locked. Thank you, guys. I forgot to reveal also. Um, draw a fortune. Uh, okay. One. Draw a fortune on the map. I don't know what you mean, Jim. All right, so we have spent three endurance. We have three more. I could just attack a magic attack, attack a range attack. Both of them can hit this guy. So let's do that. Uh, this one costs one. We're doing magic attack. Let's see if we can even do it. We need a seven or less. Uh, we got eight, so we fail. We get a token. Okay, uh, this one a range attack. We need a 14 or less. Uh, 19, we fail. But we'll actually spend this to re-roll. And a 4. Okay, so we succeed. Now we're going to do a d6 plus 1. Uh, we got 6, 7. So we take 7 off this guy. And boom. 3 away from death. Alright, that feels good. Okay, uh, that's our turn. Enemy. Uh, this guy's going to roll a d20. He gets a 9, which literally does nothing, keeps watch. Happens in the harem, stays in the harem. I don't know what a harem is, and I kind of don't want to read it now that Bob's commenting about it. <laughs> uh, no, Jim. Uh, oh, killing a henchman in this game, uh, in this expansion, you do not get a fate token as normal. You do not draw a fate card unless it tells you. Uh, you just do the defeat effect. So his defeat effect was shuffle one fortune card into the fate card pile. We didn't have any left. So we don't shuffle any in there. You don't draw any. You don't get any advantage. Literally, that's all they do in this expansion. But if you play with these guys in another expansion that needs like humans or guards or whatever, uh, you just ignore the defeat effect and you treat it as normal. You just get a fate token. And then you just do everything how it, how it says. Ah, rem. Yeah, so the only advantage I get from that is uh, cards and my deck gets manipulated. That's how that works in this expansion specifically. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Oh, Vol Volcara says, uh, Harim is the room with the Sultan's mistresses. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, it. all right. Uh, so that guy went end of round, getting another henchman. It's a Ulamidian knife thrower. Okay, uh, if the knife, knife thrower succeeds at a dodge test, oh, they have a six dodge. The attack's damage is actually reduced to zero, not just half as normal in this game. Okay, and only six, but has no armor, but six health. Uh, and can dodge, possibly. Interesting. Interesting. All right, where are we moving now? <laughs> we can go to the kitchen. And the kitchen has an ugly dwarf-sized cook with a huge nose. You can make a persuade roll to gain his trust and respect. Oh, look, this might actually make us draw a fate card for once. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave that as an option so we can go to the kitchen. 
We can't go to the harem. It's locked. So we need to find a way to unlock it, which will be hidden somewhere else. Uh, we could go back north. Courtyard, we can actually, once we get to the courtyard, move again. So we could go to the guard room. We could go to the dance of ales, or we could go to the herb garden from there. I feel like the kitchen's where it's at right now. Or or we shoot over to the herb garden or the dance of ales. Oh, the knife thrower also has three actions per turn. Oh my. Oh my. Now I wish I had the card that auto kills. Oh, I, I kind of do. But I still have to succeed. It, it doesn't count as an attack. But we could we could just make the knife thrower lose HP. Assuming we, assuming we succeed on this test. But again, we might not. It's ha rim, not ha rem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> herb garden, then south. All right. Okira wants to go to the herb garden. We go to the herb garden. Hazrabal, Hazrabal. I know I pronounce stuff bad all the time on the channel, guys. If you guys don't already know, I'm bad at that. I'm sorry. Uh, Hazrabal cultivates numerous magical herbs. In this garden, herbs with both positive and negative effects. Entering, make a survival roll to prove your plant knowledge. So, survival roll. Uh, survival roll for me is a 10 or less. It's pronounced harem. Oh, okay, harem. An 8. So that's a success. Because we need to have 10 or less. We get to shuffle a great misfortune of fortune and one misfortune in the fate card pile. Okay. Great fortune, a fortune, and a misfortune into here. At least that's what I thought. Yeah, again, I, tomato, tomato, I, I don't know. But there is probably a more accepted way of saying it. But in English, I, I don't know. To me, I just see harem, 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 harem. <laughs> Bob says, Rob's mispronunciations are part of his charm. Come to think of it, it is all of his charm. <laughs> Tomato, potato. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, man. All right. Uh... <laughs> All right, we moved. We're going to draw two. We're going to ready up. All of our cards. I have one equipment in the discard pile for her ability. We need to get that going. All right, what do we got? We have, like, a way to prevent damage. This is like a one-time play a card being a red card. In an adventure, the hero loses five fewer HP from an opponent's successful attack. We haven't lost any HP yet, so I feel like it's okay. As long as we get rid of that knife thrower, which has to happen. Oh, look, we have two attempts. We have two attempts to get rid of this knife thrower, which I feel like we take that, that path. I'm going to put an endurance down. I'm going to stop there. Okay. Uh, all right, let's do that. One, two, three. We're going to take a, uh, a ranged combat test, 14 or less. And we're going to play this card, which it will target this opponent. And it's not an attack, so there's no dodging. They'll just lose the 6 or 7 HP and be dead. Uh, it's a 17, so that is a fail. Oh, yeah. Does that work on that? Do we still get a fate for that? The test, right? Where is that card? It's a test. You gain fate points. Not for tests. Not for tests. You don't gain fate points for tests. That 17 does nothing for us. That sucks. All right. But we knew that might happen. So that's why we're going to do it again. We're going to play this other card. Like the biggest waste ever. Yeah, no fate points, not attack. I thought so. I have, I have like a quick reference guide because I always forget what, what it gets fate and what doesn't. 13. That is less than 14 or equal to or less than. We are successful. 
See you later, knife thrower. Uh, and we get to shuffle a fortune card into the fate pile, but again, we have no fortune. So on this expedition, we're so fortunate we've run out of fortune cards. Uh, I didn't know that was possible, but we've literally have been shorted like three or four fortunes. That's crazy. Okay. And we have one left. Well, let's just do an attack. Uh, let's just attack with a range attack. 14 or less. Because those weren't attacks, right? Nine? No, a six. A six. So we're good. Uh, and now we get a d6 plus one on this gin up here. Uh, a five plus one. I can't seem to hit the dice tray. Uh, but either way, we did it. Oh, and this guy says shuffle a misfortune card into the fate pile. So a misfortune. Not all, all fortunate here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Christian saying in the chat, if at first you don't succeed, throw another pomegranate at uh, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, yeah, I drew the second one, so I thought, like, yeah, let's just throw them both in, make sure we have enough fate for it, or endurance for it, endurance for it. Okay, okay. So that's our turn. Uh, henchmen, nobody's home. Okay. Uh, time, nobody spawns. Uh, move. Move, move, move. Alright, so we had this before. This is the whole lizard wolf one, is on this direction. First entering, you meet an old man who's sitting next to a lizard wolf. It basically controls him. And we'll have to spawn the Lizard Wolf Henchman card and place it to the right of the row of villains. When you defeat the Lizard Wolf, remove this card from the game and replace it with the story of the Pilgrim. I want to go there. I really do. Otherwise, the bathroom is mini-boss. Oh, we never saw this card. We never saw this card. Oh, it's the Observatory. The Observatory is here and it's locked. Yeah, I forgot to do that one. Again, I'm sorry, everybody, if you're yelling at me. Um, hmm. So the observatory, we can only get there by going up to here, flying carpet. So that's kind of far away. Jim, you only draw those fortune cards. And, and the first time I played yesterday, I drew like, I drew the deck out. And there's, if you have none there, you automatically fail. Uh, so it was weird. It's very swingy and random uh, each playthrough. But you need to see this here. Or sometimes a card will tell you to draw a fake card. Uh, instead of rolling. But if we failed on this persuade roll in the kitchen, for example, we would draw a fate card. Based on that fate card, you would then get a different result. You could still fail and do this, but that's how that works, I believe. We just haven't failed on any of those yet. Or we failed and they didn't have that effect in them. But they are here in the Dance of Ales. There's a fail here on the Harum. harem. Uh, there is, yeah, one here in the kitchen. I don't see any text that says roll a fate card, but there, that does exist. That does exist. Sometimes it will say just draw a fate card instead of rolling. <laughs> uh, so yeah, let's just, let's just go see the lizard, the lizard wolf. Okay. And we're going to see this. Oh, the sand wolves are back. Okay. A little side quest. And a wolf woman. A wolf woman. We can check that when we go to move. We almost saw the whole palace. And you know, I know it's a smaller palace this time, but uh, some of it is locked. So on first entering, you meet an old man who's sitting next to a lizard wolf, a, chim a chimera created from a wolf and lizard. The old man sadly tells you that he created this creature to impress the sultan. Azrabal. However, due to a mistake in the magical formula, he does not control the Chimera. The Chimera controls him. The Lizard Wolf rises to its feet and attacks you. Search for the Lizard Wolf henchman card and place it at the right of the row of villains. So, I don't know if it's in here or in the side deck. But I figure it's a henchman, so let's just see some combat. No, it's not in here. Oh, story cards have fate effects. Okay. Lizard wolf spot. <laughs> uh, where's my other henchman? Over here. Expand. Oh, yeah. I can show you some cool art on these cards. Oh, there's the lizard wolf. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Supernatural. 18 with two armor, two activations. 
One and two, he jumps. The starting player must succeed at a perception roll. If they fail, they may only ready half their exhausted endurance cards round down at the start of the next round. Ooh, that hurts. He'll attack 2d6 plus 2 damage. 9 to 20, attack. Uh, the starting hero suffers 1d6 of damage. Defeated, see the Humorologist Palace card. Oh, okay. So we got a mini boss, kind of. A mini, mini boss. 18 on this guy. Uh, but I want to show you Mel's favorite card. Well, this is Mel's favorite enemy card that comes in the deck. Palace Cat. Don't know how you find the Palace Cat, but it's in the henchman. And uh, yeah, it just looks cool. But doesn't that look fierce? Like, you don't want to mess with that cat. That's like Grumpy Cat's like older brother. Something. Ah, oh, boom. But anyways. <laughs> All right. Oh, kitty. <laughs> I assume it's like the cat version of the bunny from like uh, Monty Python, you know, like the, the Holy Grail. <laughs> Christian says, you don't find the palace cat. The palace cat will find you. <laughs> Excellent teaser text there. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. All right. So, um, hmm. Okay, so we draw. Oh, found the ability to get more magic stat. We got the Elixir of Alertness. Which, in an adventure, you may also play this card during another hero's turn. That hero discards the endurance cards and receives the extra endurance. Oh, discard this card in any number of your exhausted endurance cards. Until the end of the turn, you gain endurance equal to the number of discarded endurance cards. So it's just like a, a boost. Hmm. Oh. I think that card should become endurance. So we're going to ready up. Ready up. Yeah, yeah, you can just become Endurance. How about that? How about that? Okay. Uh, so we're going to spend three. And we're going to bo bo boost up our magic stat to ten. So we succeed on ten or less. Uh, so that's three of our... Uh, what do we got? Eight total. Let's just spend four and get this gun into play. Where we get a D6 plus three. And then we'll just attack with that. Against this lizard wolf dude. I don't know. I don't know. I wish we saved those pomegranates now. I really wish we saved those pomegranates. Okay, so let's try a range attack of... We're looking for 14 or less. 18. Really? Okay, so we fail. Hmm. 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 We could spend it for endurance to try a magic attack. But I feel like that's just kind of a waste. I feel like we should save it for this to reroll later. Uh, so that's it. That's it. Okay. Uh, so this guy's gonna go. He rolls a 20, which is an auto fail. He, but he still does an attack. I suffer a d6. But he will stop. Yeah, or does he not? 19 to 20, attack. Starting hero suffers a d6. Do they always have a 20? Yeah, but I feel like that's a critical fail. And they just don't continue. I'm confused. All right, we're going to do the attack. We'll do the worst one. Uh, so it's a one. Dodging is pointless because I still suffer the damage. So we're at 39. Okay, time will tick. We get a henchman. And we found the cunning advisor cannot be attacked as long as there's another opponent to its left. 
And it, it looks like it could gain, uh, could add activations to an opponent on its right. And health. Okay, where are we moving? Where are we moving? So we could move to the wolf woman. Let's see what the wolf woman's all about. First entering, a woman in the shape of a wolf breaks through the wall and introduces herself as Ingrid Stila. Oh, where was that? That was mentioned before. Was that in this run or a previous run? I don't know where that was. <laughs> I don't know where that was, but anyways. Uh, a powerful magical djinn who can transform into any shape she desires and has mastered the power of fire. She wants to gain Hazerbal's favor by killing you, and no amount of begging and pleading can change her mind. Select the opponent card, Ingrid Sila, and place it on the special opponent space. Oh, this is a boss. Fulfilled. When you defeat Ingrid Sila, remove this card from the game and replace it with the story of the djinn in the bottle. Be careful. You can only defeat Ingrid Scylla if the story of the blessed water and the story of the brass bottle are face up in play. Oh, well, that's kind of cool. So it tells you there what you need to be looking for before you even try it. I don't have either of those. So there's no point. There is no point at all. But there you go. Oh, where the mermaid was. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right here. The story of the silk scarf. If this card is face-up in play, Ingrid Scylla only has two activations per round. But again, you don't want to fight her yet. We want to find those stories, unlock those, and they could be, uh, like again, they might be hidden in the ones that aren't even available today. Uh, or no, not those ones. Where are the rest? Oh, did I mix them? I did. Yeah. Over there. So these four that are out of play, which I shouldn't have looked at, but anyways, I don't know what they all are. But yeah, we don't know what's missing, and that could lead to other things, right? So you can't get everything done in a run. No way. Which is cool. All right. I mean... I don't really want to do sand wolves. I'm just going to go to the herb garden, I guess. And work our way... How do we do this? So we can't really get up here unless we either do the boss fight in the bathroom here with the ba Baradrash, special opponent, or we get the sand wolf shuffled in and start that storyline. But we'll do it. Let's go north. Alex wants to go north. Sand wolves. Uh, upon first entering, you're faced with a pack of magical sand wolves. Shuffle the four henchman cards with the sand wolves keyword. And place them on top of the henchman pile, then draw one. Okay. Sand wolf. Sand wolf. Wolf. Sand wolf. So the sand wolves, I, I guess they're different. Oh yeah, they all have different health values and stuff. Oh man. Oh man, okay. So we'll shuffle... We're going to reveal one and put the rest on top. Oh, man. Okay, draw one card from the top and place it at the right row of the roll of villains. So we got the 20 health one, two defense, one activation. Oh, we forgot to activate this guy twice. Oh, no, but he, he got the fail roll, right? So he doesn't activate the second time. Yeah, yeah. I just realized that. All right. Uh, so this is the Wolf of the East. Good heal. Yeah, so when you defeat him, you place a token on the Sandwolves Palace card. Oh. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it says fulfilled. If there's four tokens on this card, you remove it from the game and you replace it with the story of the four Sandwolves. So it, it, it doesn't make sense. Like, we're not going to probably be able to complete this, this run because that's like a lot and we're going to see more. 
but it's something you could like attempt on a future run and go really hard at, right? Um, and try to beat. Like you can't you can't spread too thin because like those tokens won't stay. So when you reset on a future run, you you got to start this over. We're gonna reveal this one. So the storeroom again. Oh, this is where the group of thieves are again. We saw last time, so that's revealed. Okay, uh, draw two. Ready up. Magic attack, plus two. Oh, this might come into play. We might need this prevention. Sure, it's not the greatest defense, but it's something. And we have a magic attack that actually does a plus two on it. Which is better than our magic attack that's just a d6. That seems like a good play. Let's just do no endurance. Spend two. And we'll play another magic attack. We'll spend two more. And we'll put in our helmet. Okay. And then we have four left. Let's just do a couple attacks, I guess. Or do we draw first? And we may be drawn to something good. Uh, let's just attack. Range attack. Uh, so we'll spend one. Okay, uh, we'll try to get 14 or less. A two, that's less. Uh, so a d6 plus three. Oh, who are we attacking? I'm going after the lizard wolf, I think is the play. Yeah, let's just do lizard wolf. Uh, d6 plus three. A seven. Blocks two. Nothing else tricky. He's got no dodge, I see. No text. Just taking four. Five away, right? Nope. Say seven yen. Yeah, we're just taking away five. Two armor, two armor. Okay. Now let's try. Spend an endurance. We'll try a magic attack. Fortunately, my magic is uh ten or less. Got six though. That works. Uh that is this one. This is a d6 plus 2. And we'll just keep fighting the same lizard wolf, which I keep forgetting to say. Uh, 5 plus 2, I said, right? Yep, 7 again. Blocks 2, loses another 5. Down to 8. Okay, that's our turn. Yeah, because we did a range, we did a magic. We're not allowed to do two types of the same attack. We can't do another magic or another range at all. That's fine. Uh, okay. So now the enemies. So this guy is going to go to activate twice. Seven. That says the starting hero suffers 2d6 plus 2. So we roll. Uh, we got a 6 plus 2 is 8. We're going to try to dodge. Looking for a 6 or less. No, nope, we didn't get it. So I don't know. Let's just block one. Okay, we're at six, seven, eight. Plus two. Taking eight. Down to 31. Okay. Oh, but then minus one, minus one. 32. Yes. Blocked here. Okay. Uh, now this guy will go again. Second activation from the Lizard Wolf. A 5. Does the same thing. D6 plus 2. 2D6 two plus 2. A 4, 5, 6. Try to dodge. 6. Nope, no dodge. Take another 6. Uh, down to 26. My dodge is 8. Well, my dodge is only 6. Uh, I think this is all I have extra dodge for, right? A six or less? Or less? I don't think I have any other dodge uh, boosting things. I don't see dodge symbols. Or do some of these other cards have dodge? No. I feel like that's it. 
Okay. Um, now we move on to this guy. Pulls a 19, which says nothing round, nothing looks around conspiratorially. And then now we go to the wolf of the east. Got one activation. 13. Uh, heals himself for five, but he's already at full health, so we're good. Time. We're going to see another henchman. Oh my god, it's another wolf! Who would have known? We've got a wolf of the south. And it gains plus one armor for each other henchman in the row of villains. Oh, oh, he's got three armor right now. He's only ten, but man, that extra armor. Uh... Yeah, getting out of control already. That's what I see. <laughs> We're getting out of control. All right, where are we moving? What's the storeroom do? Bunch of thieves? I think we go there for fun. Let's go there. Entering. You meet a group of thieves. Make a persuade roll to pretend to be one of them. Or persuade is eight or less. Probably not going to do great here. Uh, 14. That's a failure. And I wanted to do this. And I'm glad we failed, because uh, we draw a fate card now. And of course, we found a fortune. That's the most likely result, which actually we read the fulfilled. We'll see it made us draw on the failure. And then I believe because of what we drew, we now do the success we fulfilled. The thieves accept you as a member of their guard and tell you how to defeat the sand wolves. Whoa! Why didn't I know this before? This is awesome. Remove all henchmen with the thief keyword from the row of villains and take the a chunk of meat card. Also remove this card from the game, replace it with the story of the thieves in the palace. What? Okay, hold on. Anyone have thief? Thief? Nope, no thief traded. Chunk of meat. Check what the heck that is. A chunk of meat we got. <laughs> That's cool. Very cool. All right, we'll remove this. Get the story of the thieves in the palace. Grab that now. The thief in the palace. Where are you? There it is. Story of the thieves in the palace. So what's a chunk of meat? Let's see. The chunk of meat. The thieves inform you the sand wolves are fed only once per week. Thus, they attack any stranger out of hunger. Therefore, you can distract them for a while by throwing them a chunk of meat. You keep this card for the remainder of the adventure and may use it during each palace exploration. Once per round, it allows you to ignore the uh, result, a, a die res roll result, of a henchman. Sorry, a henchman with the sand wolf keyword. Once per round, we can ignore one of these wolves, is what I get. One activation. They both each only have one. So whatever the result is, if we get a bad one, we can just say, eh, here, eat some meat. Eat a chunk of meat. So that's cool. That's cool. We got a chunk of meat. And that's for the rest of the adventure. So if we want to ignore the sand wolves for now and just run away, the next time we come back, and if we see the sand wolves again, we have this, and we can really focus on the sand wolves. I mean, there's a chance we could deal with the sand wolves now that we have this, but I don't know if that's enough. Uh, then we have the story of the thieves in the palace, or in the, yeah, in the, in the palace. An imp, imper, uh, impoverished, impoverished bard joins a band of thieves who sneak into the wing, Wind King's palace to steal magical artifacts. He finds a magical wineskin that contains a delicious wine and replenishes itself every time he takes a sip from it. The bard becomes addicted to the wine and pines away until he's rescued by a friend, but the rescue has a price. Ah, here we go. Here, Jim. Here's one where you draw a fate card when you enter. If you get a great fortune or a fortune, you may discard up to X cards in hand or endurance cards to immediately heal that much D6 worth of health. Otherwise, the hero may, hero may immediately move again. If you get a misfortune, no effect. If you get a great misfortune, you must discard two cards and or endurance cards. Ooh. So you can try to heal off this, but it's a gamble. But again... We have places in play that we can manipulate the fate deck to increase your odds. Um, so we can make it like more in our favor, right? Uh, 
Okay, we're drawing two cards. We're going to ready up. Uh, we found Dragon Spit. Guard this card after the damage roll of a hero's close combat or ranged attack. Add plus four to that roll. Ooh. We've got to put, play two to put it into play, but then we can fire it off whenever we want. I like that. And we have the Alchemist Bowl. Guard this card during your card draw phase to draw X additional cards. X equals the number of equipment cards in your discard pile, including this card. So I only have one in there, so this would help me draw X cards. So it's like a way to cycle, but in this expansion, like you don't really want to draw through your deck because that's the end of it. We still have a few cards, but once we, get, once we draw out our deck, it's done. Uh, okay. So, endurance, and spend two, we'll put this one into play. Okay. What are we doing? We're gonna kill the lizard wolf. I wanna see that story end before we get out of here. So the Lizard Wolf has eight, shield of two. So I say we just go with our Balistrina and attack. Okay, so we need to spend one. And we're going to roll for a range attack, 14 or less. Four, that's successful. A d6 plus three on the Lizard Wolf. A one, unfortunately. So four, two get blocked, two gets through. Do this, discard this card after the damage roll. Oh, we could add four to the roll, but that's not enough to kill him, so I don't want to do that yet. I don't want to waste it. Uh, but let's do a magic attack. Magic, we need ten or less. Four, we're good. Uh, so this is a d6 plus two on our lizard wolf. Wow. <laughs> oh! This would do one damage, but I can only add four to it. Again, not enough. Oh my god, this is harsh. Harsh, harsh, harsh. Ah, This doesn't let me re-roll those, right? So I don't think so. We do this. That sucks. All right, uh, let's not waste it. Let's just, he blocks two, one gets through. The lizard wolf is still alive. Okay. Enemies. Uh, lizard wolf. See what he does. 18. Uh, suffers d6 worth of damage. Two. Uh, sure. I'll block one. Okay, so we'll just take one. I won't even... Uh, I guess dodge would matter, possibly. No, we don't get it. We'll just take one. Uh, he'll activate again. 11. The same thing. D6. 4. Let's see if we dodge. Nope. Take 4. Down to 21. Yeah, I didn't think so. Christian's saying you can't spend fate points on damage rolls. I didn't think so. I, I always have to think for a minute on that stuff. I wish. I wish. Uh, okay. That's that guy done. Now this guy, the Sultan, he gets a six. This is advice. The opponent to the right of the advisor gains an extra activation. This round, if there's no opponent to the right, he deals a starting hero six damage. So that's that. All right, so then this guy will get to go twice. And remember, we can ignore one wolf result per round. A five. This is attack. The starting hero suffers 1d6. Sure. Uh, it's a 3. Try to dodge. 8. Nope. Take 3. Uh, 18. Okay. He'll activate again, thanks to the Sultan or the Cunning Advisor or whatever. 7. The same thing. All... I'll take that one. Seven. 
is another d6. Two. I'll try to dodge. Of course, I dodge it when it's just one. So I take one. Or when it's two, I take one. Uh, the only time I've seen Nadim uh, lose a health was from uh, one of the starting cards in here makes her lose one. But supposedly there are ways. Maybe it's in boss fights. I'm thinking maybe it's when we have our leaders, like our special opponents. Maybe in those fights it can do that. I, I don't know. Or maybe there's just story stuff. Again, I, I don't know. I've not seen it ever. And Christian, you don't have to spoil it, but they, they come into play somehow. I don't know if you want to generally say that they come into play off like story cards or what. I, I don't know if you want to spoil it, but I haven't seen out how to do it other than a starting Hasbro card when you're setting up the game sometimes. It does it. But like your own health, like your card draw, you have to keep an eye on that. But we've not seen it drop, so I don't know. Uh, all right. So now this guy goes, right? The Wolf of the South. Seven. Attack the starting hero suffers a D6 plus two. Uh, I'll use the meat to ignore this one. So we don't have to worry about it. All right. Time token. Nobody spawns. Uh, where are we moving? Oh, yeah. We forgot to reveal this. You guys know I forget every time. I don't even mention it anymore. The Avery. Aviary. Aviary. Entering, you meet a wondrous parrot that looks at you with intelligent eyes before it croaks. Tell me a story. Tell me a story. Make a skill roll against the skill value of X, where X is the number of face up story cards in play. And it looks like. Doesn't look like we can die from it, so I'm all good for going to the Avery. So let's just do that. We're not going back to the Sand Wolves. Nothing that happens there. Kill the bird. <laughs> Let's go there. Uh, story cards. One, two, three, four story cards in play. So we're testing against four. We got 18. Not even close. Uh, so this is going to draw a fate card. Oh, we still fail with a misfortune. Uh, the parrot looks at you with curiosity, but nothing happens. Oh, okay. We're trying to get a critical success on this to fulfill the card and get another story card. Oh, is that the Council of the Bird that was for the uh, observatory? Yeah, that's to, you have to get a critical success on this to get the Council of the Bird so we wouldn't have auto died uh, at, the, at the observatory. <laughs> Stupid bird. All right. Uh... Okay, let's just draw two. Maybe we have a way to get our uh, ranged attack option up. Or test. Aqua Regina. In adventure, discard this card and name a henchman. The henchman loses half of their current health rounded up. Ooh. Ooh. I like that. I like that. All right, let's just keep these ready up. Ready up. Ready up. Okay, so let's name this wolf, and we'll spend three, and we'll half round it up, lose half rounded up. What's he at, 20? He's just going to lose 10? Uh, that's better. Less red dice, better. All right. Uh, let's spend two on beefing up our range stat. Now we succeed on a range roll of 16 or less. That's good. And then let's, let's attack the lizard wolf. We want to get rid of that guy. Uh, what am I doing? We spent one, two, three, one, two. Yeah. Okay. So spend one. Uh, let's try to shoot the lizard guy again. So what I say? 16 or less? Uh, 15, we're good. So let's roll our damage on him of a... Oh, I forgot. This is supposed to be giving me plus 2 on my attack test. So I succeed at 18 or less on that. I forgot about that plus 2 there. So a d6 plus 3, though. I don't think it mattered. Maybe it did. Uh, so we need a d6 plus 3. I think I just roll bad on my damage anyway, so it doesn't matter. 
Now two plus three is five. He blocks two, but we are going to discard this card to add plus four. We're just going to throw some dragon spit at him. Let's get him out of here. Got enough of that. Blizzard Wolf. Now we're going to see the story on this one. We fulfilled it. If you defeat the Lizard Wolf, remove this card from the game, replace it with the story of the Pilgrim. So you see the uh, addictive hook of this is like trying to complete all these little side quests and dig story out. And I really like this. This is like, this is the way I'd want to play Aventuria uh, uh, forever now. I, I don't want to play it the old way. <laughs> uh, even if I've seen all this stuff, this still just seems like a more fun way to play. I, again, I've not played it multiplayer. There are multiplayer rules. So this is like pretty heavily focused solo player uh, game, but this is really cool. So the story of the Pilgrim, uh, an old man on the pilgrimage meets a friend he has not seen for many years who tells him a sad story about how he lost his fortune and took to the bottle. The Pilgrim has pity on his friend and gives him the ability to talk to animals for one night so he can visit an animal king to ask for advice. The friend follows the advice, but is transformed into a manticore by the wind king. This card helps you in the aviary. That's where I am right now. Okay. Um, so interesting. Uh, so now if I enter this location, I draw a fate card. So it looks like it's a way to heal now. Now we have another location we can heal at. That's good. That's good. Oh, look, look, look. Uh, so it says here, so uh, if the story of the pilgrim is it face up in play, we read uh, the fulfilled. So now we just need a critical or a regular success, and we can succeed in the aviary. That's cool. That is cool. All right. All right. Okay, uh, let's spend another, do our magic attack. Put that on this. Uh, so we are looking for a 10 or less. 3, that's good. Uh, now it's a d6 plus 2. Oh yeah, we should have figured out who we're attacking here. Um, I don't know. This guy actually has 3 armor. because. Oh no, he has uh, 2 armor now because it's for other henchmen. So his armor's a little less. Only 10 health. Uh, this guy, though. Oh, this guy can be attacked now because there's no opponent to his left. Normally you can't attack this guy when there's an opponent to his left. So we can try to get rid of him. Get the guy? Yeah, we'll go for the Cunning Advisor, I guess, because he could give activations, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, so we'll attack him with a, what was it? Magic D6 plus 2. So it's 5. He blocks 1. 4 gets through. He's down to 6. Okay. Um, now the enemies go. So this guy will roll a D20. 14. Uh, starting hero suffers a D6 worth of damage. Four. I'll try to dodge. Nope. Take four. Down to 13. Okay, now the wolf will go. A five. Starting hero is 1d6. Four. I'll try to dodge. A five is good on the dodge, so I only suffer two. Down to 11. Now this wolf will go. And he gets a five, which is... The starting hero suffers a d6 plus 2. I'll ignore that one with the meat. No, doggy, no. All right. Uh, we move this. Spawn another wolf. So it's the wolf to the west. Seven dodge on this fool. Two activations. Ooh. Okay, so he gets 10. All right. And now this guy's up to three armor now because there's three other uh, henchmen. Uh, okay, where are we moving? Can't go in the bed chamber. I don't want to spawn a leader from the bathroom. So it looks like 
We are staying where we are. I want to stay where we are and try this bird. So face up story cards. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to roll a test against it. Nine. We fail. Fate card. A fortune. Okay. That means we succeed since we have the story of the pilgrim in play. We fulfilled this. The parrot croaks happily and tells you one of his own stories. Remove this card from the game and replace it with the story of the council of the bird. Okay. All right. Uh, a drunkard steps before the parrot king and asks the parrot king to free him from his drunkenness but the parrot king only shakes his head a bird cannot teach a human to fly only those who repent and ask for forgiveness can find redemption the drunkard realizes his crime and travels to the palace of the wind king to bring back an artifact he stole many years earlier this card helps you in the observatory which we know and then entering you draw a fate card on this one where the hero could instantly move to any face-up card of our choice for a great fortune. A fortune, the hero may immediately move again. Misfortune, no effect. Great misfortune, the hero loses the D6 worth of health. That's cool. All right. Okay. Now, like, I want to get that observatory again, but we have to, like, go all the way around. But we could just stay here and then try to go to any place. Teleport. But again, we're running low on life. We're, we're going to get out of here soon, I think. We might just try that to do it. Get to the courtyard and get out. Okay, draw two. Like, we're getting low on our cards. We only have six cards left in our deck. So we're, like, coming to the end. We have ten, 11 health, six cards in our deck. So if we don't want to die with Niam here, uh, we need to get to the courtyard and GTFO, uh, which we can if we get a great fortune here, which uh, I don't know how many great fortunes we have in here, but... Uh, we might, <laughs> we might just need to keep on moving and go back this way. So that's like a lot of rounds. We don't want to go here for the boss in the bathroom. Although, although bringing him into play and then like going here might be the faster route, like, and just run from him kind of idea. Hmm. Rather than staying here and getting trapped. I don't know how many... Great fortunes are in the game. I feel like there's three of them in the deck, though. I feel like there's three of them out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards. Oh, you're allowed to check the fate deck and shuffle? Oh, I didn't know that. Thank you, Christian. Uh, yeah, I just don't know how many copies. Oh, there's only two we have in here. Only two. Oh, they were on the top. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, now we got to shuffle them. <laughs> and I'll do a little cut. Let's cut there. All right. <laughs> Dang it. Got to remember our ability. So we could make an opponent just lose three HP from our discard pile. Oh, we have two other ways of getting cards in there. So yeah, let's ready up. We drew an alchemy laboratory. Search your draw pile for an equipment card and take it into your hand. Show the card to the other players and shuffle your draw pile. Okay. And then we found a berserker elixir. You may also play this card to improve another hero's attack. The player who hero who benefits discards the endurance card. So play this card after making an attack roll X. Maybe between 1 and 6. Distribute X from the attack die result, lowering it to the damage, raising it. Afterward, discard one of your endurance cards. So you can take away from your skill roll, or your, yeah, your attack roll, and put some of that result into your damage roll. Okay, I like that. That's neat. Okay. Uh, Alright, so we're not going to play any more Endurance. I think we're good. So, do I want to dig in my deck? Yeah, let's just 
two, four, six. Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe not. Let's just get out of here. We need to get out of here. That's all we're doing. Um, did we move or stay? I feel like we just dealt with that, right? Yeah, and to the bottom they go. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, if we're not going to use this card... No, let's just hold them. All right, uh, or we just fight. Okay, let's do an attack. Let's attack. Guess let's just tack the cunning advisor with this card. Oh, 13, we're good. Thirteen, we yeah, we're good. No, now let's just attack him. Uh so it's a D6 plus three. So it's six. Oh, it's one short. He does block one. So it's down to one point left. Oh, that's it. All right. All right. That's sucky. I don't really want to use this for that. Okay. So let's do another endurance. We'll do magic attack. 10 or less. 11. That's a fail, but we'll reroll. Two, that succeeds. Uh, and we'll just attack this guy for d6 plus two. Doesn't matter, it's successful. Kill this guy, shuffle a misfortune fate card in. He's gone. I'll slide these wolves over. Uh, I feel like that's it on my turn. I, I don't want to do any of this stuff. So let's go Wolfie number one. One activation. He gets a super success. So he's actually going to go twice. Uh, 2d6 worth of damage. I'm going to ignore this one with the meat. Even though it's probably not the worst out of all of them. Yeah, it's not the worst, but we'll do it. 2d6. I only have 11 left. That could be killed. Uh, so I'll ignore it with the meat. He'll go again. 14. Uh, heals himself for 5. Oh, that sucks. Go 5 there. Okay. This guy will go. 1 activation. 13. Oh, this is the one I didn't want. Every other henchman immediately performs an activation. So this guy will go again. This is the one I wanted to ignore with the meat if I ever saw it, but too late. Uh, so this guy goes 13, heals himself for another 5. <laughs> wow! So he's back up to his 20, full health, uh, even though I use that, that spell or whatever to reduce him down to half. He's back up to full health just like that. And then this guy will get to go because of this guy. Rolls a 2. The starting hero suffers 2d6 worth of damage. Uh, it's a 5. I'll try to dodge. Nope. I'll block one. I'll also discard it to reduce three more. So out of the five, I block one. It says discard to reduce an attack's damage by an additional three points. So there's a four total I block. Only take one. Down to ten. He'll go for his first normal activation out of his two he has. 18 is Snarls Threateningly, so it does nothing. 
And his last activation, I hope. Oh, he gets another one for free. So the starting hero suffers 2d6 worth of damage. Uh, it is a 9. I could dodge. No dodge. So I'm literally down to 1 health. I need to get to a location where I can heal. Okay, and now his activation from rolling the critical, he gets to go again. Oh my god, he gets another critical. Oh my god. So this is 2d6 worth of damage, which will kill us no matter what. Because even if I dodge, which I don't, I'm going to take more than the one to kill me. A boom! So we pushed our luck too much. We went too far into the palace. We got too far from the courtyard. We were blocked at getting back. Even on the next turn, if we drew a fate card and we stayed there, would we have been able to get back? Nope, we would not have. And that would have just immediately moved again. We might have gone here, draw another fate card, and it would have been a fortune, which could have let us heal. Um, we might have discarded two cards from hand, maybe? I would have discarded two cards from hand, which could have done X worth of heal, which would have healed us for maybe like 10. But yeah. That's what, it's all about push your luck. I already got scared once I saw too many enemies uh, and the damage potential. Even with the meat card and the killing the Sultan guy, uh, it's too much. So yes, Niam is now imprisoned. So Niam is not allowed to make a run in the dungeon anymore. She's locked in the palace. She is locked in the palace, imprisoned. So, as you can see, I don't care about any of their lives. I will just throw them into the prison, no matter what. <laughs> but yeah. Now you can go check out the Kickstarter in the video description, and if this looks interesting to you, you can go take a run at it, play the opposite of how I played, and you might actually be able to uh, complete it after 8 to 12 playthroughs or whatever it is, but maybe with less hero death. Is the hope. <laughs> and now I'm a prisoner of the couch, supposedly. <laughs> but yeah, that showed more story stuff than I wanted. Like, we flipped over more cards than I expected in two runs. Uh, but still, there was so much to see. We, did, we had the cards that were out of play. We have all these red cards. We never turn into blue. We, again, have this whole Manticore expansion, which, again, I don't know how it works, but it's more cards that can add some variability. We didn't see any bosses on purpose. I didn't really want to see bosses. Um, and yeah, we didn't see all the henchmen. There's more henchmen that you saw. Uh, lots of variability, lots of things that you could still see. And look at the story deck. Like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 story cards we haven't even seen. All it takes is 8 heroes, lol. Ah, uh, maybe, yeah. Or what is it, up to, up to 12? Or 11? Does it say 11? Yeah, you just need to own at least 8 to 12 characters. So you get 4 in the core set. So you just need to buy like uh, some extra expansions. Get up to 12 characters and you're fine. <laughs> you can be as reckless as you want. <laughs> but I do like to push your luck of like... Because again, remember, if you play this game often and you're constantly leveling up heroes and getting reward cards, beefing up their decks, making your heroes better. There's certain heroes you put all those work into. You don't want to have them just die on one run. You need them for like those boss fights and those bigger enemies because maybe they have the better cards and the better skill tests and stuff to win more. So I put my mage at heavy risk. I wouldn't normally do that. I would save her for like, you know, third or fourth run kind of and mix her in a little bit. Um, and that's how I would handle it normally. But yeah, that that's it. That's how the, the you know, the... Nadime, the Caliph's daughter, the palace, peeking into the palace every night. That's how it works. That's how it works. Uh, so, I also want to mention something I forgot to mention at the start of the stream. So the Kickstarter going on right now that this is for, uh, link is in, again in the video description. Uh, but they did since the last stream, I think. Uh, it was after the stream, but they did add option. People were complaining. Uh, yeah, they added an option just to get the two big box solo expansions if you don't want the little ones. Then I think there's, a, yeah, there's a way just to get the little boxes if you don't want the big ones. 
So they broke that up at least. So you, you don't have to get all six boxes or more in this, this Kickstarter if you don't. Well, they still don't have like a very entry level friendly way for new people to get in the game. The best way is this, I guess. Uh, if you're going Kickstarter route, the best way is this one that comes with the base game, Force No Return, Ship a Lost Soul, Ship a Stone, and the Extraordinary Heroes bonus pack, whatever that is. But again, this game's been out in retail. The game's been around for, you know, three or four years, I think at this point. Uh, so you can get the Aventuria base game at retail. So go look for it online, get the retail game. The Kickstarter is going for like 18 more days. So I suggest go play it, get in as cheap as you can, try it. You still might have time to get into the Kickstarter or get a late pledge going. So again, that's up to you. But that's my personal recommendation, but that's up to you. Maybe you're okay. You just want to, you don't want to track down expansions. You feel like, you know, you like this type of game and you're going to have to bundle a few things together. Um, but you can get the base game, but you do need the base game for this expansion we played to get today. So no matter what you need that. So don't forget that. Uh, yeah, Christian. Thank you. Uh, Christian works for Ulysses Peel. He's one of the story writers, the lore guy. Uh, so I appreciate him being here and helping out with rules, questions, answering stuff in the chat. Uh, very funny comments too, by the way. I do appreciate that hanging out all day with us here. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I got. So hopefully that gives you a taste of what these two big box expansions are like. So of course the other one works a little differently, but you are trying to get into a tower and work your way up to different floors and stuff. Uh, and there's lots of traps and death and that kind of thing, uh, is what I got from reading the, the little pitch on it. I read like the first page of the rules before when I was curious. Uh, but again, thank you to the Patreon supporters of the channel that voted on which one they wanted to see. I really had fun with this one. I like it a lot. I don't see how I can go back to playing normal Aventry after this. Unless this rumored or this uh, German version of the game is, is always like one wave ahead. But there's supposedly some reading online. There is a campaign expansion coming. Some people were talking about it in the last streams chat. So if there's this campaign mode and there's like visiting a town in between, uh, I'm a sucker for that stuff. So that could be another way I'd want to play Aventria. So it's cool. They're definitely involved in the game. Uh, game seems to have a resurgence since Jim sent you it and played it on the channel. Any connection? I don't know. I feel like there's not a lot of coverage out for this game. This game I never heard of until, like you guys saw my reaction at, at Christmas time when we opened the box from Jim and I saw the game and I was like, never heard of it. Never knew what it was. Never heard of it. So, um, but yeah, it's been on Kickstarter. So yeah, what's going to happen is Jim, if I ever can go to Gen Con again, if that ever happens, I will bring you the whole game and all these expansions and you can have them. I think that's what I'll do to so thank Jim for sending the stuff over. So Jim, don't worry. <laughs> you can back it if you want, but uh, if you don't back it, I'll, I'll get you this stuff. You can have all this stuff uh, if I ever see you in September of 2021, if Gen Con actually happens. I'll, I'll personally deliver it. <laughs> so don't feel too bad that you gave away the box. Don't feel too bad. <laughs> Because by then, for sure, I'll have played a bunch of it, and I'll definitely be okay parting with it, for sure. Well, Kyria says, should try the Tear of Fear expansion. I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Hank, yeah, you're too late. We're just wrapping up here. We're just wrapping up. Uh, but you can scrub back. It'll be available on the channel. Check the playlist section. We have an Aventuria playlist for all of our Aventuria playthroughs. Uh, so you can check them out there. Yeah, Dragon says none of it heard of it. Uh, Jim Benny is the only one who heard of this game before that, that I know. <laughs> uh, oh, it's better for solo. Oh, I have some of the earlier boxes, but this seems much better for solo play. Fear of Fear is dragons. Ooh. Fight a three-headed dragon? I don't know about that. Jim, why didn't you give me the Tear of Fear expansion? <laughs> why didn't you have the dragons? I'm just kidding. Uh... Oh, Jim played for three straight months straight, uh, three months straight and burned out. I can see that. I can see that. But it's cool they spice it up with this, I think. I, I think it's cool these expansions are kind of spicing it up. Oh, you just passing by? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Thank you, Hank. Uh, all right. Let's see. 
the questions, the comments. But yeah, thank you everyone for spending time with us today, having some fun diving through this. It's been a blast. Uh, yeah, I apologize obviously for missing a few triggers and things, but again, I, I didn't want to play too much. Like, I was going to play a full playthrough yesterday, but I didn't know what a full playthrough was completely. And when I was playing off camera to kind of figure out the game, I was forgetting things and I kept rolling things back, I had the rules open. And it's weird, just because that extra step of movement and how it can kind of mess with your turn in the flow uh, from what I'm used to, uh, I knew I would have trouble catching it. But thank you everyone for helping me out there. Uh, we learned some things. Cool, that sounds cool, Volkira, that sounds cool. Yeah, I have, before this, I have the base game, uh, Forest of No Return, the ship one, Ship of Lost Souls or whatever, and uh, Ship of Souls. I also have the Hero Struggle. I think that was part of, like, a bundle. That's what Jim got from, like, a Kickstarter or something. But then they had, like, the In at the Black Boar Kickstarter I saw that had some other expansions. And you can find some of those expansions as add-ons in this current Kickstarter. So if you're, like, looking for things... Uh, and you back this, you can add some of that stuff in the Pledge Manager, I assume. Uh, and find the expansions you're, like, missing if you want to, like, add more to your set. I assume. Oh, Dragon still has 90 minutes, doesn't want to go back to work. We went longer than I thought we would. Because remember, after yesterday when I played and I thought the enemy attacks us every time, uh, my playthrough was really quick. So I thought if I did two today, it would be pretty fast. But that second one, we lasted a lot longer. Hank says, any plans on demoing the 1815 Scum of the Earth, the Battle of Waterloo card game launched today by Tristan Hall? No, no plans. I, I never heard of it. No, I, I didn't know. I didn't know about that one. No, he never reached out about it. Oh, so yeah. Nope. Maybe in the future, if we ever get a press copy or something. Um, but those ones aren't easy to find, like in retail in Canada, really. Uh, any of the Tristan Hall stuff. Like, pretty expensive in Canada, actually. Very overpriced. Uh, Alex is asking, what's in this current Kickstarter that's not in retail? Uh, there is. <laughs> you want to know? You want to know? So, in the current Kickstarter, they sent me all of it. Uh, there's this expansion we just played. There's the other big box going through a tower. Okay, there is the hero pack that comes with the hero and a little origin story you can play with from one to six players. There's the Veil Dancer adult themed uh, little playthrough there. You can play as the Belly Dancer. Comes with her own deck, her own story. There is the Servant of the Nameless One, which you get to play as like an evil nameless, taken on a hero form with his own story, but it contains his own player deck. Uh, and then there's this Treasure Hunter hero set that we streamed on Tuesday night. You can check that out in the playlist section down in the video description. Uh, there's this Wheel of Life I got. I don't know if this is in the current Kickstarter or in retail yet, but it just gives you dials uh, if you're missing dials for some of the new content. Uh, but you can see what's involved in there. It's listed on the Kickstarter or on the product page. Uh, and then there is... There is a little deck expansion that allows you with the basic box to play uh, to basically teach the game with four pre-made hero decks. So you can get four players around a table. And this is good for like stores to demo the game or if you want to teach a bunch of players at once. This can help teach players. Again, this is not for everyone, but I, I think like every store that sells this game should have this set up on a table ready to teach the game to people uh, if you're trying to push the game at all. And then uh, this is a team challenge game for up to 20 players. Comes with enough cards in here to have a team challenge. Which, with COVID right now, I don't see that happening anytime soon. But if you can find up to 20 players that want to play Aventuria at a convention, uh, yeah, this is what you need to have a big team challenge mode. Which, again, I don't know exactly how it works. Tabletop Simulator. Those hero packs are not in Tabletop Simulator. Only a base game is. No, there is an add-on for this one. Uh, yes, there's an add-on for this one. Itch. We can find it. 
So if you go to Ulysses Spiel International, uh, Google it up. The first right here, the first like news article, most recent. Uh, I guess it's like a, a mod you add in. Again, I'm not too familiar with Tabletop Simulator. Um, I, I think you just like install little add-ons. I feel it's like Octagon. I play with Octagon. I've never played with Tabletop Simulator. Um, so yeah, it tells you how to add it. Oh yeah, so right here, you download this little file and whatever, and you can you can actually try out the new mage that I I was just playing with, and then you can learn how to make her work better than I can. Uh yeah, it works. Yeah, you download a little zip file, blah blah blah, you install whatever. Well, there you go, Cam. Hopefully that helps you out. But yeah, but for those who've never played Aventuria, there is a tabletop simulator mod to play the base game. So there's no excuse. If you want to try the game out, you can play it on tabletop simulator right now. Or you could uh, go find the physical game in retail. And the Kickstarter is going for 18 days, if you're interested. Now, word of warning. My opinion has not changed on the game uh, regarding the amount of randomness in the game. So it, my heavy, heavy warning to you, and it frustrated me at the beginning, there is a lot of randomness to add variability to add kind of like a simulated challenge. So if you're you're not down with the old school way of just rolling dice with possible re-rolls or tweaking the number a bit here and there, like you are literally rolling to find out if your scenario is gonna be easier or harder as you play it, as you get into them. You're rolling dice, D20s for all the enemy effects. You're rolling for your stuff. You have like very little control over what happens. Like you could put all the money you want into buffing your stats, Playing an item, bending endurance to, to actually attack with that item to try to take out a bad guy, but just out of a bad roll and not having a reroll token, or even that reroll can miss. You could spend four reroll tokens and still miss. Uh, I've seen it before. And if that kind of thing bugs you, and if you don't like rolling dice, this is not the game for you. Just FYI. So understand that that's the downside of this game, in my opinion. But as long as you go into it with a, I'm going to have some old school fun of just rolling dice, reading story, knowing that there's a lot of luck based in the game, right from the setup, like right from setup, luck all over the place. Not to mention the drawing from card decks and stuff. That's like on top of the dice rolls. But yes, every game has to have a bit of randomness in it. I agree. I agree. But there, I'm just telling you on the menu board, the vast buffet of all board games that exist, there is games that are heavily focused on control and strategy and tactics that you have heavy, heavy amount of decision points and it, most of it's under your control with a little bit of randomness. All the way to the other side of the scale where you're playing Candyland and you're rolling dice and that's your movement and you literally have no control over the game. It's completely randomness. This is like a little bit, you know, kind of in the middle-ish but more on the end of randomness out of all the kind of strategy medium weight-ish kind of games I played. So yes, as much as you want to say like every game has to have randomness in it, yes, but it is a heavily sliding scale. And all I'm talking about on a scale of 1 to 10, Belko's asking how random is it? Uh, it's definitely not a 10, because you do have some control on what cards you play and what you spend and effects you fire off when you do, what enemies you attack, in this case, in this expansion, which direction you move. But it is high. It, yeah. Alex is saying in the chat probably about a seven and a half. I, I would have to agree it's around that. A seven, seven or eight probably out of ten. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But again, so Bob's saying if you're not keen on randomness, there's always the patented Rob's takesy backsy reroll do over again mulligan available. Uh, there's also the option of just not playing this game and playing many other types of games. But I, I want to be honest and upfront about that from my experience. That's the real knock against the game that I would just be warning. So I am having fun with it, but it took me a couple of games to really understand and accept that's the type of game I was playing. So if you go from a game that's like Gloomhaven, where a lot is under your control, there is randomness, obviously. You're drawing from a deck and not rolling dice. But in that game, you have the ability of how you're manipulating that deck. So you feel like you have a little bit of control uh, in the card choices. I don't know, but yeah. But it does, and Christian's right, it does depend on the adventure. Some adventures don't have as much randomness to it. Uh, so he's saying about a six to nine, <laughs> depending on which adventure. 
But yeah, that's just, I'm warning you based on my experience. That's, that's originally, I was very frustrated with the game because I didn't, I, I hadn't played games like that in a long time. And I, I try to stay away from stuff like that. That is too much on the randomness. I don't mind dice rolling. I don't mind a lot of randomness, obviously, or wouldn't be into gaming. Um, but I like mitigation. And, and there is some mitigation in this. As you get later in the game, you have ways of manipulating your stats and dice and that kind of stuff. And you can build your deck to be a little more helpful with that kind of stuff. And again, even in this expansion we were just playing, like I showed you, there's, there's Nadim cards or Nademe cards or whatever you say it that you can put into your deck to help you with those skill rolls even if you want, to help you manipulate them and, and win. So just a word of warning. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Rob's having fun, he must love it, I need to buy it, because it's probably just like all the other games he loves and plays. I do like it, but it's on a different scale. Like, and Jim's saying, what is the fun factor from one to 10? Uh, with this expansion playing solo today, I'm on a fun factor of like nine, to be honest. But I do like playing this game with multiplayer though, more than solo. But this freaking little mode, I love this expansion. I love this expansion. This, this is, I have more fun playing this than I think I've ever had playing Aventuria. That's what I'll, I'll say to you. And I've only played three runs total ever. So like I haven't even pushed this expansion as far as it can go. And there's variants for it. And there's added decks and things too. So yeah. That's all I got to say about that. Alex says, uh, so yeah, and feel free, anyone, give your opinion who, like Alex uh, Bach in the chat, obviously, as some of the game content has played it, uh, Jim too, any, any of you guys or, or, or gals in there that have played more of Aventuria, feel free to give your opinion in the chat too. Because uh, remember, not everyone, you know, I have a different library of games and experiences that I've played and I have different tastes than you, right? So maybe some people are like, man, I love it because these are my favorite games and I love that kind of stuff. But that's like, that's my only knock against it. And I just know there's some people out there that will like avoid games with so much randomness and they won't find it fun. I know that. I've heard that complaint before about other games. Um, Belko says, I guess for random dice chucking, I would stick with Risk Star Wars Edition. <laughs> If you can find it, unless you own it already, yeah, but a lot of people, you know, can't buy that game now, right? Uh, solo is a 5, multi is a 6 to 8 rates Alex on Fun Factor, you mean, right? But yeah, this whole Kickstarter, uh, Alex, seems more focused on solo play. It feels like well-timed with COVID and stuff, right? With like lockdowns and that kind of thing. Uh, I, this should have, uh, they should have done this Kickstarter like, last uh a year ago would have been like a perfect time for it but it's still it's still good it's still good to have it now but uh yeah yeah what's the delivery on it notice what is our delivery estimate august of 2021 that's not too far away but again it's a kickstarter so you may have to add three to six months at least on that depending but again i'm playing with like basically retail stuff uh, and it's really just translation and it looks like it's already done. So I don't see why they would miss that delivery date, but who knows factories, right? Christian says it'll become even better with the next Kickstarter. <laughs> already, already planning for the next one. And we know it's going to, you can, you know, it's going to come right. The, the campaign stuff. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited for that. I think that'd be cool. All right, uh, I'm going to get out of here. And we're back tomorrow with some more Sleeping Gods. We're continuing our playthrough of Sleeping Gods. Uh, I believe it's 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. Uh, you can see that on the channel at youtube.com forward slash Rob's Gaming Table. It is there to set a reminder. We're back with more Arkham Horror Dunwich Legacy on Sunday. And again, if you didn't notice, I posted in a few places. Uh, but we did get a hold of the... Thanks again to Maddie. We got a hold of the Curse of the Roguru uh, standalone expansion. So there were a few people on the last Arkham Horror episode that voted how to spend our experience is to go to that side quest, a side scenario. Uh, it's now an option. So if you want to go change your vote or vote at all, uh, go vote for one of those options if you want us to play Curse of the Roguru on Sunday. If not, we're going to talk about it on Sunday's stream. 
we may just override it based on people's interest and jam it in for the next weekend, or we might put it up on the poll and, and people might vote for it. Uh, we'll see. But anyways, uh, we're back Sunday with that. And uh, yeah, working on some other games. Working on some other games. So we'll have some other playthroughs next week. Uh, but thank you for watching, everybody. Thank you for hanging out. This was fun. And thanks again to Ulysses Spiel for sending these copies over for us to play with. Uh, we do appreciate it. And good luck on your Kickstarter. Anyways, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.